public hearing for the um, on um, sorry Wednesday October 6 2021 for the City of Tampa's Architectural Review Commission welcome everyone and I'm Susan Klaus Smith I'm an architect and today I am serving as the chair for the Commission I'm also the vice chair if you're here to present a project, you will have limited time to make your presentation, so we suggest being thorough but concise. When coming to the microphone, you will need to identify yourself and your relationship to the project. The commissioners will not ask any questions during your presentation. Your project should be presented in the following order. The site plan, the elevations, the architectural details, and the wall sections. After your presentation, the staff will present their staff report, and then we, the commissioners, will ask for uh, public comment. Following, um, following the public comment, the commissioners will be asking questions in the same order as your presentation. When you do come to the microphone, whether or not you're presenting or here to make a statement for or against the case, please state and spell your name clearly. If you're here to... Name mine. Your time, that's why you're not supposed to ad lib this. Your time will be limited to three minutes, so take some time now to summarize your comments because three minutes goes by very quickly. Following public comment, the applicant will have five minutes for rebuttal. And then the public hearing will then be closed. The only comments which, be, which will be allowed after the public hearing is closed will be in response to any questions from the commissioners. The commissioners will then discuss the case and will make their decision based on the City Ordinance, Chapter 27 of the City Zoning Code, the Design Guidelines, the Secretary of Interior Standards, the Historic Preservation Development Review comments, and the testimony given at the public hearing. As a reminder, the ARC can only act on items that are within our specific juris jurisdictional responsibility. Owner agents are independently responsible to obtain any appropriate permits and or approvals. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do silence your cell phones, and I will ask my fellow commissioners to please introduce themselves, starting on my left. Good evening. My name is Stephen Sutton. I'm a registered architect. I hold the architectural historian chair. My name is Dan Myers. I'm an architect. I'm Brent Taylor, building contractor. And tonight we have with us city staff, Dennis Fernandez, Ron Vila, Beverly Jusak, and our attorney tonight is Kamara Petta, Pettis Mackle. I don't usually mess that one up. on the record whether or not they've had any ex parte communications regarding any of the items that are listed on the agenda? I have none. I have not. Thank you. Additionally, will the commissioners please state whether they have any conflicts of interest regarding any, any of the items that are on the agenda? I have none. none. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Ron Vila, I'm staff with Historic Preservation. Moving down the agenda to continuations, we have three that are reflected on this evening's agenda. Two of them are going to travel together if we could get a motion for those two, and then the last one will need a separate motion. So the items that are under continuation this evening are, are ARC 21-442 slash REZ 2186. This is for the address of 1701 North Florida Avenue, 202 East 7th Avenue, 1802 to 1808 North Morgan Street, 209 East Oak Avenue. And that was requested by the agent to be continued to the November 3rd, 2021 public hearing at 6 p.m. Also traveling with that uh, re request for continuation is ARC 21-450 slash VAC 21-09 for the address of 1701 North Florida Avenue to be continued to the November 3rd, 2021 public hearing at 6 p.m. And if we could get a motion for those two uh, first, please. I move for a continuation for ARC 21-442 REZ 21-86 for the properties located at 1701 North Florida Avenue, 202 East 7th Avenue, 1802 through 1808 North Morgan Street, 
and 209 East Oak Avenue, as well as ARC 21-450, VAC 21-09 for the property located at 1701 North Florida Avenue to the November 3rd, 2001 public hearing at 6 p.m. 2021. 21. Um, I have a second. I second the motion. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Thank you for that motion. And the next continuation is ARC 21 434 for the address of 1723 West Hills Avenue. This was requested by the agent to be continued to January 5th. 2022 public hearing at 5 30 uh, p.m. You know the once we change the calendar year we're starting these meetings at 5 30 instead of 6 so that's not a typo so just put that on your calendar so everybody kind of remembers to be a little early at the beginning Thank of the year. Thank you for the reminder. Yes. I move for the continuation of ARC 21-434 for the property of address of 17 at 23 West Hills Avenue to the January 5th 2022 public hearing at 5 30 p.m. I second the motion all in favor please state aye and raise your hand aye, aye. opposed seeing none the motion carries at this time we're ready for the swear-in everybody that wishes to testify including staff please stand up and raise your right hand Ms. Juzak will swear us in Moving to the first agenda item, which is ARC 21-488 for the address of 1702 West Chaton Avenue. This is in the Hyde Park Historic District. Currently, there is a non-contributing structure that was constructed in approximately 1979. The zoning classification attached to this partial is RM24. It's multifamily. Um, the square footage of the request this evening is approximately 6,000 square foot. The request for the certificate of appropriateness is for a primary structure, for a detached accessory structure, and site improvements. At this time, I'd like to go through the photo presentation. Property in question, this is from 1929. Property in question is in the green box in 1929. There was no structure there. A uh, couple of things to uh, recognize on the Sanborn map is the primary street uh, that the uh, parcel faces is Jaton. There are two alleys. There is an alley to the east of the property that runs north and south, and there's an alley that runs to the rear of the property that runs east and west. You see the vernacular of some of the houses um, that were there or the structures that were there. You see some multifamily uh, structures here because of the zoning classification allows for the multifamily. Once again, this is a current overhead here. Property in question is highlighted in the green parcel. And as I panned out and, and took this area here, you'll see some of the rooftops here and you'll see some of the uh, larger structures that reflect the zoning classification. Once again, you have the alley to the east that runs north and south and an alley that runs to the rear of the property, east and west. This is the non-contributing structure that's currently here. It has been slated for demolition. We do that at the administrative level. The property does have a knee wall. It has this uh, tree in the front that might come up to play uh, in the discussion. We do have uh, a representative from Natural Resources here. So as we go through the, um, the presentation at the end, when if you have any questions, we could have him come up and address uh, the board. This is the current curb cut that dies into a front-loading garage that is very atypical to the historic district. This is looking down the sidewalk, uh, the retaining wall, the scoring pattern in the sidewalk, the planting area, and then the street. Once again, you see the tree that comes into play in the front yard. This is looking down the street. Uh, because it is multifamily, you see the concentration of cars and that use uh, parallel parking on the curbing. This is looking down Jaton to the west. In the other direction, this is looking down Jaton to the east, which 
intersects with Rome Avenue. This is looking at the structure. It's a single family house directly across the street to the north. This is looking just at the side of the non-contributing structure. You see some trees on the property line to the abutting property. And this is the abutting uh, property. It's a period house uh, contributing that was in front of this board for renovation. This is looking at the east elevation of the non-contributing structure. This is the condition of the alley that runs north and south. Moving to the backyard, you see a series of trees back there as well. These are live oaks. This is another shot at the backyard. This is from the back of the house, looking at, at the uh, backyard, and then uh, the property line is indicated by the fence and the alley behind. This is the condition of the alley uh, behind the house that runs east and west. And the last photo I have is the termination of the two alleys. This is the east-west alley, and this is the north-south alley. Uh, that concludes the photo presentation. Before we get into the presentation by the, uh, by the agent, uh, I just want to briefly bring to your attention page 61 of the Hyde Park Design Guidelines. It touches upon compatible new construction. And I'd just like to read a couple paragraphs from there. The, the design that's coming in front of you today is a little atypical of what we usually see. But reading from the guidelines on page 61, uh, it addresses the major development of Hyde Park extended from the late 1800s to the mid-1920s. Just as Hyde Park includes a diverse set of architectural styles reflecting and evolving uh, throughout these four decades, architecture as an art continues to evolve. Creative solutions reflecting current architectural design theories and practices are encouraged in the design of new construction in the historic district. These guidelines do not in, uh, dictate style, but they set up criteria under which the new design can be accurately compared to the setting within the historic district. New construction is encouraged to be unique in design while reflecting the basic scale, materials, qualities found in the early buildings in Hyde Park. Also on your staff report, on page Three, I believe. Page three, three. it also uh, has the design criteria for new construction on page three that talks about, you know, the scale, the massing, the setbacks, the orientation, the quality and window proportions that we normally talk about. So the introduction, I wanted you to get familiar because this is a style that we don't usually see. So having said that, the agent could address the board at this time. Good evening. Chair, members of the board, my name is Scott Steady, S-T-E-A-D-Y. Can you verify his mic a little bit? It's, it's on, he's just, so, just well, speak a little bit louder. I'll speak a lot louder. <laughs> yeah. All right, good evening. How's that? That's All right. Better, thank you. Good evening. Chair, members of the board, my name is Scott Steady, S-T-E-A-D-Y. I represent TB Holmes, the applicant, and uh, Eric Franson is here as well who can answer some questions if we, if we uh, need those answers. So first I'd like to reiterate a few things that were said earlier. The property is zoned for more than one unit. Uh, it could probably, it, between two and three, more likely two units, but the preference of the developer or the builder is to do one unit here. Uh, you'll see that there, as I point out, there is a number of Historic multi-family units on Jaton, there's a number of them, and there's already a lot of parking on Jaton. So one of the things that came early on in the discussion with staff was the, a couple of things. One is the orientation of the parking, the, the garage to the alley to the back, to take that uh, curb cut off Jaton, which is not historic, it's not, it's not uh, historically accurate, as the staff said. Uh, the, so the other was also to recognize that there's already a lot of street parking. So there's definitely a preference to follow up with this one unit with the parking oriented towards the back. Uh, as mentioned, obviously the current 
building is, is a 1970 ranch house, and it's simply not contributing. Uh, so with that, uh, like I said, we worked carefully, or I, I didn't actually, uh, Eric worked a lot with staff. Uh, he brought in a, a different site plan and really changed a lot of it, including, which I'll go into, the, the large welcoming and porch on the front of the, the structure, which is consistent with Hyde Park and getting the pedestrians and the, the uh, kind of social structure on the front yard. So if I could go through a few pictures here. In a can you hear me as I mm -hmm. speak? All right. Let's see. So I got a. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the wheel right here to zoom right. in. Yeah, I agree. And I didn't know it was on. Yeah, yeah. This on. Okay. It's a little glare on it. So just briefly, staff pointed out. Obviously, this is Jaton. There's a, a large multifamily unit here. Looks like it was 1970s. This is kind of a unique structure here. It looks like a, uh, an original home here. Can't quite figure it out, but it looked like it just kind of kept growing as an apartment building, kind of haphazardly. And that's what's next door. Right, right to the next on the side is a parking lot for this particular uh, structure, which I'll show you in a, in a, in a bit. Caddy Cornered Across is a Mediterranean <laughs> style um, townhouse. And then, as I show you in the pictures, there's a number of multifamily structures, historic, that's on Jaton. So there's a kind of eclectic mix that you would expect uh, in Hyde Park. So a couple of pictures here. What I want to show here is really just the fabric of the street, that block. A couple of things. One is most of the houses, the, the, uh, historically, the parking, the, the garage is off to the alley to the rear. And also, like I said, there's a number of uh, large multifamily structures, including this one. Uh, this is a single family home, but with the parking on the back. This is a duplex with the parking on the back. This is a uh, pretty large multifamily. I think it's a quadplex. I'm pretty sure it is. Here's a typical Hyde Park home with the parking in the back. Another home, parking in the back. This is at the, uh, the end of Jaton on the block. This, I believe, is also a, a quadplex, four units. And then I mentioned that uh, building that seems to have morphed into a large apartment building. I'm not quite sure how it, how it worked that way, but there's a house out on Rome. And then this, this comes back towards the, the property, and this is a better picture. So this is the property here, and that this is the end of this, this uh, apartment building. Again, it looked like it kind of morphed off the original home. And here's the parking lot next to the, to the building. Uh, Caddy cornered from it across is that Mediterranean townhouse I mentioned with the parking on Jaton. There's a kind of a parking. And then you saw this, a similar photo. This is looking down towards the west. Uh, it shows this is the abutting property here that's being remodeled, basically, pursuant to prior approval. And it shows the streets. And actually, I've, I've driven by here a couple of times, and this is actually not that many cars parked on the street. Normally, they're just packed in there, I think, a lot because of the multifamily homes. But those are the pictures. If I go to the site plan. So this site plan... Let's see, I'll back off a little bit. This actually cleaned up the site plan. The site plan that's submitted is much more detailed, but I wanted to make sure that you could see how it's really oriented on the property, so we really stripped it down. Uh, so, first of all, uh, the property meets all setback requirements and has gotten full natural resources approval for the tree removals that we're, we are proceeding with. But I think the most important point here is that large tree that you saw in the pictures is going to be retained. And that was the goal, is to keep that nice big tree right on Jaton that's going to kind of frame the house. That's going to remain. So the focus was keeping that very large tree, and there's a very large root system that has to be retained. So 
made a big effort to move the house back. And actually, I'll point out the, uh, the, the, uh, po the porch is actually on piers because it has to be to, to make sure that the roots are healthy, which is a, another feature I think is pretty consistent with Hyde Park, that being the porch is uh, sustained by piers. So uh, a couple of things I'd like to point out again. The, the large tree is going to remain. The walkway off of Jaton is going to be a paver consistent with pavers, consistent with the appearance in, in the streets. And I think really the, the feature that um, really makes the house consistent with the, with the flavor of Hyde Park is the porch. The porch is going to be the, the width of the home, the entire width of the home, and it's going to be nine feet deep. It's going to be uh, basically a really functioning porch. Uh, kind of reminds me of the porch I, we had when I grew up, that where the family, we were out in the front porch more than just about anything else in the house. The uh, ceiling is going to be one by six pine. The, the floor would be a one by four tongue and groove. Again, uh, from a parent standpoint, very traditional. And uh, what I do want to point out, oh, a uh, couple other things. The, uh, the porch is going to have a metal roof whereas the roof otherwise is going to be an asphalt roof. But it's important too, and I know in Hyde Park you want to keep that, the plane, the elevation of the house, the porch, to be very consistent with the neighbors and the rest of the neighborhood. And so, and I'll show in, uh, with, when it gets to the wall design, that there's going to be four steps up in the center to, up to the porch, which is consistent with the neighbor and other homes. We're going to have about, we're going to be about 30 inches plus or minus above grade, which is going to, again, be consistent with the, the neighbors and the homes uh, in the neighborhood. And to show that, I've got a picture of the next door neighbor. Now, these stairs are oriented differently in that they're off to the side. Ours would become straight up onto the patio, uh, on the porch, but there are basically four steps, and that's what we have. So the, again, the height of the floor elevation will be very consistent. Uh, as well as the front setback. The neighbor's house from the, from the street to the, to the house is 27.8 feet. Ours is 28.33. Um, so it's very consistent as far as the setback goes. So when we look to the house to the next door, when I say the distance, this is actually to the, his porch, which is going to be very consistent to ours, but it's pretty, very much similar to the house as well as down the street. So we're going to be very, very um, consistent with the, the line on the street. Uh, OK. Now the elevations. This is where we're. So I, I'd say there, there is some precedent when we talk about this. We're going to talk about a home on Oregon. But um, I think we, we talked about this. I'm not an architect, but uh, I think we're talking about a farmhouse style. And in this sense, I think it's, uh, I'm going to say, kind of a modern bent on it because it doesn't have that many flourishes or embellishments. Uh, it's going to be masonry on the first floor and uh, framed on the second floor. Uh, like I said, the porch will be on piers. Uh, because of the tree roots, so the piers and as well as the foundation will have a kind of a sandy stucco on it so that it's consistent on that kind of base of the house, consistent with, consistent with Hyde Park. And again, the piers will be uh, facing the street right here. Uh, we talked about staff because obviously there's a, a vertical ver verticality to this, but the uh, hardy board, the um, the vertical siding. And uh, in talking with staff, we thought about kind of widening that, that verticality of it. I, is that a word? Maybe I should just say, yeah, I think it is. Thanks. It's not a legal term, so. It's an architectural term. Thanks. Well, I try to, I looked up a few of these, so. So, um, so we w try to widen it to, to uh, spread it out a little bit. So as the plans show, the batten is going to be a half an inch. And they're going to be 16 inches off center. So that's going to be the, the, the appearance of it. Uh, the windows are important. The, on the front, the front windows are going to be wood clad, uh, 
casement windows. So on the front, there'll be wood-clad casement windows. On the rest of the house, there'll be single hung or permanent, uh, you know, just windows. Uh, when we look at the wall section, I think this is a distinguishing feature that there's gonna be a two, at least a two inch, um, uh, they're gonna be rec receded or, or uh, recessed. recessed, thank you. Recessed at least two inches, at least two inches. And typically uh, my understanding is it's definitely done on the masonry first floor, but we're also gonna make sure they're recessed on the second floor, which is gonna be uh, the uh, wood, so that it'll have that same appearance. And uh, so here's the front elevation. This is the, I'm gonna my glasses here. This is the west elevation. This is the elevation that's basically uh, looking to over the parking lot of the, of the uh, apartment next door. Uh, this then is the south elevation, and this is the east elevation with the accessory structure in the back that has a, a garage, and there were, the only issue uh, with the accessory structure is gonna be a design exception for the height. One more elevation. This is the north side of the accessory structure, and here's the south side of the accessory structure. And there is a freezeway connecting the home to the accessory structure. Uh, here's the wall elements, I don't think there's anything particularly, I already talked about the windows, otherwise there will be the trim, hardy board trim. We can talk about the details if we need to. Uh, this last diagram does show, like I said, the, the uh, stairs to the front porch, which are basically the four steps, which is very consistent with the, the property next door. So just finishing up some pictures from right around Hyde Park that we think have some of the elements of this home and also some of the vertical um, uh, siding. So some of the elements. So here's a couple of homes on, on Bayshore. I know uh, I, I toured that home, John Sample I think built it on a Hyde Park tour once. Uh, here's a property on Boulevard that has kind of the porch, a bit of the features. Here's 801 South Edison that has those piers that I was talking about in the porch. Uh, I think this home has quite a few of the features on Morrison Avenue. It's got half a porch, but it does have that gable end and that kind of farmhouse appearance. And the one that I really want to point out is the one on 908 South Oregon that this board approved, I think within the last year or so. Uh, it's much wider, it's a much bigger home, but it has the, we have three gable ends at, on the top. There's four here. There's an expansive porch with very simple lines. And it's, it shows it better here, uh, but you'll see here that th this basically has that vertical hardy board cr across the whole home. And here's one on the side. So this is on South Oregon. Uh, another home that has some similarity to the farmhouse look is on 1910 West Morrison. And what's interesting here is it's clearly horizontal here, but it has some vertical uh, siding to the back. And then Kate Jackson, the facility right there on Rome, which this was built there's a similar uh, siding in the Kate Jackson facility right, right there in Hard Park Village. So we also, I also have available kind of a lookbook on some of the uh, shingles, colors of the home that we're looking at, which is basically a, a very, basically white, uh, some pavers, uh, some other features that I can show you if you'd like. We're more than happy to provide those. Uh, I if you have those, you, you are welcome to introduce those into the record now. 
Well, I can, um, I'll just run through them real quick then. I'll finish it up, by the way. So this is some of the hardware, the lighting outside. This is front door with the panes. This is that wood clad casement windows that would be in the front. Again, the kind of an example of some lighting. Uh, this is the example of the type of shingle and the general color. Uh, this is that smooth hardy board, board and batten. Uh, extra white, I believe the color. This is an example of some of the trim and color. Again, the hardy board trim. There's going to be some exposed rafters, but I'm not suggesting that that feature, but exposed rafters. Again, the hardy board trim. The porch ceiling. The uh, porch deck material. The brick pavers. Have an example of the stale railing to going up to the uh, accessory building. And then the fencing and the suggested color of the house, the front door and the garage door colors. I'd like to finish by saying I, I believe there's some concerns with the trees, but bottom line is we the goal was to save that big, nice tree that will frame, be a little left to the, when you look at the site plan, I go back here, Go back and just make sure we're on the same page. Well, maybe I won't go back to the site plan. Oh, I'll use this. So I think that that large tree that's going to be preserved is just going to be to the left of the door, which would be a really nice feature to frame the house. That's going to remain. Otherwise, all the other trees have been permitted to be removed by natural resources. There are some trees on the the right side that had to be removed because that's where the utilities are going to come off of, of Jaton. So with that, uh, we believe that we've complied with the requirements of the uh, Hyde Park criteria and as well as the ordinance, and we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. Staff will present their um, report. Thank you very much. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. Before we get into it, in your packets, commissioners, we have uh, six letters that have no objection uh, to the request this evening. And then we have one letter that has concerns over the uh, shade trees in the back and side yard. Staff's finding that this application is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines. Uh, we do have some conditions associated uh, with that consistent re uh, determination. When we first met, we had a discussion about the style of the structure. I wanted uh, the applicant to come forward this evening and define the style and then show the stylistic elements that are consistent with the style that he selected to move forward. We did talk about the verticality of the board and batten and to see if he could reduce the, the linear verticality of that structure with maybe introducing uh, portions of the envelope of the building that would have horizontal siding to break the, the massing of the verticality. The agent did address uh, elevation from grade, but uh, there was no discussion about the setback. I do believe there's additional uh, information that he has to provide this evening as far as the setback from the front property line to uh, the front steps. I'd like for the agent to go through uh, multiple wall sections and call out all the exterior materials if he has examples of the uh, windows and doors uh, to provide that uh, at, at later in this uh, presentation. He talked about two roof materials being uh, presented. He did show the shingles. I did not see the other uh, roof material that he is proposing. Uh, and if he could discuss a little bit more about the foundation and the foundation enclosure. He talked about the piers in the front, but as it wraps around the rest of the house, and that transition from the board and batten to the foundation. There's usually some kind of drip cap or some kind of termination as the materials uh, take on a different vocabulary. And then he showed the colors of the garage door, but I did not see the garage, an example of the garage doors themselves. Uh, that concludes my portion of, of uh, the public hearing this evening, and I'll be here to answer any questions. 
Thank you. Um, we now have uh, we have time for or we're opening uh, the uh, public comment period. If there's anyone who would like to come forward and speak for, uh, for or against, please do so. Um, have you been sworn in? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. You have three minutes. Thank you very much, commissioners. My name is Drew Newman. And let me just get the scale of this correct. Got it. Thank you. D-R-E-W-N-E-W-M-A-N. That's my wife, Ariel, and our little toddler, William. And we're the next door neighbors. And as Ron mentioned, we're working to diligently reserve, preserve our, our house, including going through the ad valorem process to preserve its interior. And we love the historic character of Hyde Park and are grateful to the RC for protecting it. Due to very limited time, I'm going to move super quickly. We'll be happy to answer questions afterwards. In short, my family has three concerns. First, the plan to remove nine out of ten trees on the lot. Second, the fact that the house is twice the size of the average house on our street. And third, the modern farmhouse design may not fit the neighborhood. The proposed tree plan would remove nine trees on the lot, nine out of ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, including this one, which is on our property too. And the tree canopy is an important part of the historic character of Hyde Park. It provides shade and cool air, and is what we see for our front porch and for our backyard as well. And clear cutting the lot also shows the intent to build the largest house on the home. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have time to go through the design guidelines, but you guys are experts. But as you know, they ask you to consider the scale and massing of the house compared to nearby buildings. And page 75 says that the building to lot ratio needs to remain consistent from lot to lot on the block. So I calculated the building to lot ratio. I pulled the data from the property appraiser on the 36 homes on the 17, 1800, 19 blocks of Jatan on our street. And all the data is here for you. And in short, the, uh, um, the, the developer's proposal house is massive. The developer's proposing to build a 4,600 square foot house, which is more than twice the mean house on our street. And it's more than 29% greater than the maximum, 1,000 square feet greater than the maximum house on our street. The building to lot ratio is similarly twice the average on our street and 39% and greater, greater than the maximum building to lot ratio on our street as well. This is not consistent with the guidelines. When I shared this, the developer said he's adhering to the setbacks, although I'll note that the side yard setback, according to our architect, doesn't comply with section 27159 footnote for RM24, um, the side yard setback. But the, the city code also says uh, section 27.105, that new construction shall be compatible in scale with adjacent buildings, even if it means you can't build as large as you can build elsewhere in Tampa under the code. Lastly, I just want to very briefly mention the modern farmhouse motif may not fit the neighborhood, specifically the barn doors with, with decorative trim. And um, Madam Chairman, pursuant to ARC Rule 7.3.4, may have 30 seconds to wrap up. Do I have a motion or is that allowable? I've never been asked that question before. Kamaria pettis Mackle from the City Attorney's Office. Um, Madam Chair, there has to be a motion and a second and approval by the board for additional time. I move that the, uh, that the member of the public be granted additional time. No, can you see with specificity specific. what length of time? Oh, what length of time? Yeah, he's asked for 30 seconds. Okay. I move that the uh, member of the public be granted 30 seconds additional in order to terminate his argument. I'll second that. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Motion passes. You have 30 seconds. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Commissioners. I'll be brief. Uh, just to conclude, the developer told me he builds 20 houses a year, and I don't blame him for wanting to clear cut the lot and build the largest house possible so he can, he, he can do his business. That, that's his business, I don't begrudge him for it. But maybe he'll own this property for 20 months. My family and I hope to stay in this, in this house for 20 to 30 years and raise our family here. And uh, the developer won't have to live with the consequences of the design. We will, 
and therefore my family and I ask that you please not approve the design today, but instead ask the developer to reconsider his plans so that they are in line with the standards of the Hyde Park guidelines um, and the city code for to protect our historic neighborhood. And so there's a lot more I'd love to say, but I'm clearly out of time. Thank you for your consideration. And I would love to submit my exhibits into the record. And I have copies for all of you and anybody else we'll, we'll have who wants it. We'll some. We'll take it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Of course. Any other members of the audience that would wish to come forward, speak for or against the case? And this next person needs to be sworn in. You were here when we did the swearing in? No, I was not. Okay. Hi, I'm Bonnie Duggan. I have uh, lived in this Hyde Park area that we're uh, speaking about since 1999, so a little over 20 years. Um, for the record, could you please enter your address for the record? 1703 West Watrose Avenue, uh, which is behind. We share the same alley. And prior to that, I was on the other alley of them, so I know the neighborhood very well. And based uh, law and cantata as the property. So I wanted to show some photos. They are smaller. Ron, you're gonna help me with that a little bit. Which way do you want to look at? We can zoom in. Which one do you want to look at? Uh, we're gonna talk about, as Drew just pointed out, some um, back, at, back trees. And we are happy to see the positive improvements to this lot, especially the return of a more historically consistent home. Um, we have just two matters of concern. One um, is really the alley and how it is difficult uh, configuration to navigate the two intersecting alleys that are abutting the property, which may further complicate that design um, with a rear garage entry exit. Um, Second is, and I know they are decode as far as spacing, but I could show you a picture. Ah, let's show you this one. And maybe water is intended so you can also maybe out of scope, but we're going to need a French drain one day. Um, where we're set back here at La Encantada, we have no problem getting in, a, in and out. The second homes, that are set back further have to park sideways because it is so tight. So if you're doing a standard um, setback, you're gonna have the difficulty they're gonna have. So um, the second is the tree cover, which um, has two very mature oak trees in the back and it provides such a, a shade of canopy that is characteristic of our neighborhood with both um, uh, sides being affected with all that shade. The Bayswater Close, which is on the east side, and then you've got the historic home next to it, and then behind on Watrous Alley. Um, so this is a picture of the two oak trees. I could see this one, of course, hindering the uh, building but this one could possibly be reserved if you had to pick a tree to save in the back. Um, I understand there was an earlier uh, design proposed that used existing Jaton Street driveway. May I have a 30 second extension? Um, I move that the member of the public be granted a 30 second extension. Please let's try and adhere to that 30 seconds. Absolutely. Um, I'll second that. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Motion carries. You have 30 seconds. So understand that there was an original design proposed that used the existing Jaton street driveway access that would have enabled them to save these trees. It's not why, clear why the design did not move forward. We'd like to um, have you consider 
the design be modified to preserve the large trees while still allowing the applicants to move forward with their project. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Any other persons in the audience that would like to come forward, either for or against? And I would also like to... I'm sorry, ma'am, but we are closed. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, seeing no others coming forward, we'll close. go ahead and close the public comment. And now is um, the portion of the hearing where the commissioners ask questions of the applicant. So if either one or both of you would like to come forward as we ask questions. Mr. Steady, okay. Steady. Steady, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. And I should know that I speak English. Sorry. I brought Eric up because he okay. can have some of the answers. So um, we're going to go ahead and ask some questions, and sure. I'm going to start with my commissioner on my right. Commissioners on my right. Sorry. I'll start uh, simply by going through some of the things that Ron was asking that did not get presented originally. Um, on the roof, you did mention there was going to be a metal roof on the porch. Do you have any sort of samples of that and or what type of metal roof that is? Yes, we do. Um, and all of this was actually uploaded. Well, say your name first. Uh, Eric Franson. And uh, all of this was uploaded to the record. So there's a copy of it up on the record. It's, uh, the, this is the lower roof. Scott just didn't highlight it. It's going to be a metal. Could you pull that down so we can actually see the sheet? Sure. Thank you. So that's the metal roof. I didn't identify it when I flew through them. Well, I see the color, but what style is it? Standing scene? Standing scene, yes. Standing scene. Okay. Could you go over the setbacks? setbacks okay I gotta be able to see it here about on the uh, site plan I'm gonna put a site plan sure. I've got a the original site plan I'm looking for that one that uh, I put up it's more detailed. Let me see here. said before the front to the home is 28.33 feet so that's the, the actual setback from the, the what, side what is it to the front porch the front porch is 1943 Rear to the garage is 1455. And the side yard is a heck of a lot of movement. I got to find this other one. Can we? I'll come back to the side yards. Could we uh, go to your next question and I'll make it's sure? Seven foot side yards. Seven foot. Okay. All in compliance with the zoning requirements. Yeah, the next thing I'd like to see is to go through detail, some of the wall details, so we can get a better understanding of the finishes, the type of materials used. Sure. Um, you want to go with the wall? Sure. So this was also uploaded to Excella, um, and it does show the drip cap edge. Um, can you zoom that in? Possibly. Which was requested by staff that we show that. 
it would be very helpful if you could zoom that in as far as you can to show what exactly we're discussing. And you can move Thank it up you. and down as you need. Okay. There's the drip cap edge at the bottom of the siding. Please pull that, I'm sorry, just please pull that up just a little bit more. Up the other way. There you go. Okay, great. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay, that makes it easier. It does not show the nominal size. Do you know what that width is going to be? It, it, uh, could you repeat yourself? I said it doesn't show the nominal size of that drip that you're speaking to. That the trim piece there? Right. That's on sheet 3.4. Looks like you got your side and just killing right off into your stem wall. There's actually a drip cap edge. Um, just trying to find it out here. It indicates you have a detail on a sheet 3.4. Do you have that sheet yes, with I you do. here? Yes, I do. Sorry, the size of this is so small, it's hard for me to, to, to read it here. Um, I believe it's, um, here it is, foundation and grade. So it looks as if what you have is a metal drip cap, but the siding itself will come down and die off right into the stem wall. Is that, am I looking at that correctly? It will, it will um, die into the drip cap, yeah, before it hits the stem wall, which right, will now be the you, continuous side of the, of the house. Could you go back to your wall detail? Another thing I noticed is in your presentation, you mentioned that the first floor would be CMU. Correct. And this looks as if it's wood framing. This is for the accessory structure, okay. and I have the same for the um, for the main structure. There we go. And to verify the vertical board and batten is what you're proposing not the lap siding that's that we're seeing on the detail where's the detail where is that where do you see that if i could ask because that's well just looking at the jog and the it doesn't say it on your window sill i'm seeing a concrete sill is, are you proposing to use that? Um, the, the sills are going to be wrapped in hardy, which is part of the lookbook that was uploaded also to the record. Um, They're not showing, um, showing actually a window trim, but it will be trimmed. Uh, I guess we could provide that at a later date. And that was while we were at that location in the detail, that was my next question was do you, what are you proposing for your window trim? Are you proposing a certain style? Smooth, hardy. Do you have any sort of sample tonight that could show us? There we go. Sorry. Yeah, it's showing. Here. 
All right, can you push that up so we can see the, now that picture there, is that the style trim that you are proposing? The trim around the windows, yes. I'm sorry, but is that also the sizes that you propose for the window surrounds? The, the width? Is that what you're asking? Yes, dimensions. Yeah. I know what I saw. No, that's just, that's just an example. The dimensions are actually on the, um, on the, oh, on the prints. Here's another example of the trim. If you have the sizes of that trim, I think it would be helpful for us tonight. Okay. It's on these if I can see it. That's on the other It's um, six inch hardy trim. And for the record, that's on all sides? Correct. Cap on that's, that's correct. And there's a cap on, on, top. on the top of it right there. Right here. I'm sorry, could you zoom in more? These drawings are so I'm assuming small. it's going to show Thank a two inch you. drip cap Thank or you. trim cap. Yes, yes. Yeah. there is. Yes. So it's six inches across the top and four inches down the sides. That's, that? cor that's correct. Oh, yeah, Thank that's you. Correct. And my concern with that trim package there, with the detail that we're seeing that was presented, is the precast concrete seal. On the first level. So I was again, I'm just trying to verify that what we're doing at the seal location. Yeah, that that will be wrapped with uh, with Hardy. All right. So we can go back to that detail and just work our way back up to the fascia and the soffit. On this. If you were to go back to the the wall detail. So you mentioned exposed rafters, and I, I see the drip cap coming off the roof. Are the exposed rafter tails going to be on the side elevations, the front gables? They're on the, uh, uh, on, the on the front. front. You can see right. them here. There we go. So they'll be exposed on the front. The gables tying in. Obviously, we'll have on the lower roof. fascia. Okay. And then also on the side for the um, accessory. Okay. Do we need any more clarification on the wall detail? Um, I, yeah, on the wall detail, it's fine. I, unless you have. No, I have no further questions, questions on the wall. On the wall section that we were looking at. I have no question. I have no further question on that wall section. Okay. Can I go back to the setbacks? I now have that just quickly. Certainly, confirm. please do. So this was this was what I presented earlier, and just so it's clear, so the si side yards are seven to the porch, nineteen point four three to the house, twenty eight point thirty three to the garage. Thank you, Ron. So here's the setbacks. Is that clear? Okay. While we're talking about the siding and the trim, also, I don't remember it being mentioned about the column style and the materials that will be used for the columns. The, they'll be a smooth up. Smooth, hardy wrapped beams and columns. Okay. Do you what know are, the size? Yeah, sorry. Okay. 
I'm not sure what the size is that, that you guys called out here. I'm sure they're I'm sorry, here it is. It'll be a five by five PT post wrapped in Hardy. But how will it be trimmed out? What will the base and the, the top of the post? Sure. Um, it'll look like this picture here. Just the trim on the bottom, right? Yes. With that trim on the bottom. You don't have a height for either trim piece? I don't believe that's been detailed. Will it have a cap to it or just the base? It will have a it will have a cap also. Okay. Well, now let's go to the front windows. On this elevation, it looks like you are proposing to use twins and triples. basically bought mold, you know, factory mold together. That's correct. They're, um, they're going to be casement windows on the front. So has there been any thought process to adding some trim in between each window so that it would look more historically correct? Uh, we, had, we had looked at that and um, This same house on uh, Oregon has that same window design with that, without any malls. And this house is within the district? That, that's correct. I think it was about a year ago that it was approved by the board. Ron, am I right about that? It's about a year. Would you be open? open to adding some trim in between those windows we had actually discussed that with staff and our architect had uh, advised that we not, we not do that okay. do you have a picture or sample of your garage door And that, this also has been, we put together a lookbook with all these um, colored items and it's all uploaded to the record. All right, now some questions, not as much related to the details, but you mentioned a design exception that was gonna be needed for the accessory structure. The height. What, what is that height where you would not need the exception and what height are you proposing? The, I believe the design exception is to increase the height of the accessory structure from 15 to 22 feet. Kamaria pettis from the city attorney's office. If the board chooses to um, approve a uh, certificate of appropriateness uh, regarding this project, that can certainly be a condition. Um, of any approval regarding the finalization of the design exception for the accessory structure. Okay. 
So, excuse me, Kamaria, that means that the design exception is under review. It, it is by, mm -hmm. sorry. It, by the city, by the code enforcement? No, design exceptions are not through code enforcement, that's through zoning and um, I thought I had it on my little note. It is being processed. It, it is usually done in tandem when they're in this process. It's not something we normally review, right? Oh, okay. But we, we're just aware of it. Okay. So. Right. And every indication is the staff has no problem with it. From our perspective, it's more of an administrative approval as opposed to a discretion. Well, it's at this point we expect to get approval if it wasn't already. Excuse me, Commissioner. Dennis Fernandez, Architects Review and Historic Preservation Manager. Within the historic districts, I've discussed design exceptions with the zoning administrator. Uh, the applicants do submit an application for design exception, but is subject to your approval through the CA process. So if you approve the design uh, as a two-story structure that uh, uh, is at, uh, below, at or below the 22 and a half feet, then uh, that serves as a indication of no objection from our division to the request that they have processed already. Good. Yes, thank you. Um, any additional questions from my right? Yes. Okay. Can you bring your site plan back up? Okay. The uh, simple site plan that I showed? Yeah, that one's fine. Uh, well, I've got the more difficult, the more detailed one. It, let me bring up that. I've got that one. The drive looked to be roughly 14 feet from the alley to the garage door on the accessory structure. Yes, it which is. Which seems which is the, just a little shallow. That's the city's requirement. Okay. Confirm that. Transportation has reviewed this and has approved it conditionally, I guess, with, with uh, So with that said, staff, I have another question regarding the setbacks for this particular zoning. What are the rear and front setbacks? The rear setback to, from the property line to the primary structure is 20. To the accessory structure, it could be a, as little as three and a half because the vehicular access is off the alley. When transportation reviews this, they want 24 foot back up. So you could use the alley to maneuver. The alley is a 10 foot alley plus the 14 foot that is in private property gives them the 24 that meets transportation standards. Those setbacks are consistent with the RM24 classification for their zoning? Correct. Everything but the front yard. In the front yard because of the tree that he spoke about yes. and then the averaging uh, down the block. But okay. the, the side yards and the rear yards are consistent with the zoning classification and transportation's review. Thank you. We're not requesting any variances for setbacks. And did I hear we had someone here representing uh, Metro resources. regarding the trees? Yes. It, did you have a question for yes. him? Could, would you mind? And you were sworn in, correct, when you came? Okay. If you could please just for the record your name and your department. Thank you. Hello, I'm Stephen Eister, Natural Resources Inspector. Could you bring us up to speed as far as where this particular property is in the process, permitting what has been approved, what has not been approved regarding the trees in question? So the tree removal will run with the approval here and then with the approval of the building plans. So this is first, and they apply for the building plans where additional tree protection for the front tree, the grand tree, will be set up, uh, including off-site trees. There's a 31-inch tree on the neighboring property to the right, so additional protections will be put in place there, and then the trees can be removed, and then mitigation will also be assessed. Um, they did get an arborist to already come out and assess the trees. They provided that right up. Uh, most of the trees are C8 or C9 quality, which means they're just below the average um, retention quality we look for. We look for C7 and better for most projects. So that's kind of where they are now. Okay. Um, before you leave, I'd like to ask, we have, there's actually a, a site plan that shows 
the locations of all the trees that are be taking, being taken down. Correct. If you could please zoom into that. Thank you. And you'll notice that we actually notched the building um, here for this, this tree here. I'm sorry. Yeah. This, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm point here. I'm sorry. Thank point you very much. Place. Sorry. Yeah. We notched Something's our building. Something small I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is better here. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry. Can you point out all the trees? Because I think I know where they are. Sure. But could you please point out for those of us up here exactly which trees are being removed and where the neighbor's tree is located. The neighbor's tree is here. Okay. And we put a protective radius around it and notched our, our and also notched our, our structure in to accommodate it. Um, there is a tree here. And there is a tree uh, also in the front that's being removed. And then there's a couple on the side where you'll see we, we're bringing our utilities in because of the tree on the, the, the um, because of 34 inch live oak in the front, there's nowhere to bring utilities in to the property because the utilities come from Jatan and uh, we're bringing the utilities here along the side. And these trees here are going to come out. On that side where you're mentioning bringing the utilities in, there was a reference made earlier that that may in fact be a shared tree. Um, I, I actually, I have the, um, the approved <coughs> site plan for the neighbor's lot. And um, this was actually approved by the city of Tampa for his, um, his project. Um, you'll see the stamp actually. So it was approved by Benjamin Daniels uh, in May of this year. And uh, these are the trees in question and his site plan that he submitted to the city actually shows them on my lot, so. Where are the current utilities coming in for this property? Um, I think that there, there's a, um, I, I don't know to be honest, but there is a, um, there's an existing meter, uh, water meter location right here in the front yeah and that's going to be relocated you'll see we, we, we're relocating it out of the protective radius of the tree which is one of the things um, that when we get together with our arborist in the beginning of any project that we review with him to make sure that we're you know trying to save any trees that we can on the property Yeah, that's, I'm sorry, we're just reviewing what we have. Okay. Can you point out um, where the fencing and the any outdoor equipment will be placed? It's one thing you didn't go over in the site review. So, um, to zoom out a little bit. so there'll be two gates, um, one here and one here. And then the gates, uh, the fence will run along the side of the property. It'll have a, um, this is one of the things that I think transportation or one of the groups that, um, I think maybe actually um, wastewater or one of the groups that the city of Tampa reviewed. Um, and we'll have doors here, gates for our trash, which will be on the side here, uh, where, where it shows garbage pad. And then the, the gates come back um, here. And then there's another gate over here. And then the fence runs along, along the envelope of the property. Did you have imagery of the proposed gates? I remember seeing the fence, but not the gates. Oh, uh, I, I do not, but it will be made from the same material as the, uh, as the, the fencing. And material. what about the hinges and the locking mechanism, the hasp? Um, they'll, they'll, be, um, they'll be black. Um, I'm not sure what the... I don't think you have those. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a picture of it, but they're, they're just the, what the typical 
blocking that mechanism. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Sutton? I have Please. a couple of uh, questions respecting uh, your aesthetic details, uh, things that don't show up on your sections. I uh, would like to start, first of all, uh, with your board and batten scheme. Uh, I, I understand where that's coming from. Uh, it's typically associated with uh, uh, an eclectic farmhouse, but it also is present in many other different architectural revivalist and vernacular styles. We can see it in, in, uh, in, in Tudor revival. We can see it in the, in the Gothic revival. Um, it's a very popular uh, uh, finishing technique uh, for uh, your walls. Now, the question I have, though, is that the general per generally when we see this, it's done on a domestic scale uh, to a more delicate scale, if you will, broadboard, narrow battens. And we see here from your elevations a much wider Batten. Have you considered using more, more narrower or, or, or narrower battens? Um, it was actually at um, staff's recommendations that we went with the with the um, resistance. But you mean the half inch instead of paying? Yeah, half inch. he's talking about the strip. The or strip so of the half inch instead of a half inch. Right, the batten is a half inch. Or, or somewhere along those lines, because I look at the I look at the elevations and I see you know. Uh, Batten, which could be something on the order of four to six inches wide. Yeah, a typical batten is two to two and a half. Or, Would or you less. mind putting your elevations up, please, and pointing out which are the battens and maybe um, zooming in a little bit so we can see that much better? It says it right here, by the way. Yeah. So there's a. So do you understand that that what you are indicating on your elevations do not are not consistent with your statement that they would be half an inch wide? There's a, there's a note right here. It says one and a half batten, 16 inch on the okay. top side. It's a, it's a one by two. One by two. Yeah. And so that means it's it's much narrower than is actually shown. Yeah. Right. That would change. That would change the entire. If we were right. shown more accurately to what you're describing That's what I'm as saying. an image, that would make this look a lot more delicate than it actually is. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm. Gonna, I, I think that perhaps we'll ask for a coordination on that part. Um, I understand the porch. I understand the lack of railing. I understand the piers. Uh, the piers, though, for your porch, um, what, uh, what material will they be represented? Are they going to be concrete? Are they going to be painted? Are they going to be stucco? Are they going to well, be brick? I, I mentioned it. They're on the plan, I'm familiar with it, it says sand stucco. Stand Sand, stucco. Right. And that and that would be the same finish for yeah. your stem wall yes. around the rest of the yes. building. Okay. Yes. And that'll be a painted feature. Yes. Um, I would like to uh, talk about one last item and it seems to me to be a little bit to me of a source thumb uh, with your aesthetic. Um, the garage doors. Uh, you have uh, presented to us the concept of garage doors that are very barn-like in their, in, their in their nature. And I don't really have an objection to that, but I'm wondering if, if, a, if a different style of door could be considered as a better fit for its companion dwelling. As an example, your, your main entrance doors, front and back, are done in, uh, in, in panel work. Or, if you will, uh, with respect to your your siding choice, a, a door that has a more verticality uh, to its individual panels, uh, at, because you're, I'm looking at these doors. They're not small, but they give to us a geometry which is kind of foreign to what you've already developed for the rest of the dwelling. Have you given any thought as as to how that fits? Or because I know where I know where it came from. It came from the the farmhouse concept. Right. Okay. But this farmhouse is in the middle of Hyde Park in the middle of Tampa. And I'm wondering if I might need a little bit more massaging in that respect. Yes. We would be open to that. In other words, and it's, it's hard to see actually because of the, all the, the colors on this, but uh -huh. like I said, ours would be paint and also the hardware. Uh -huh. But we would be open to, to you'd be, the you'd, be, you'd be open to a different coordination with that. That's correct, yes. Very good. 
I have no further question. Can Everybody? I see the um, south elevation of the primary structure, please, which would be the rear? I, I would like to let the uh, primary structure, not the garage, please. Architects are very good at keeping things organized, by the way. <laughs> All right. Um, south Elvish. So there is, a, there is a note on your site plan, and, and, and it's, um, it says Lanai inform me that and that means there's an intent for screening, bug screening. Is that correct? There's no intent for screening, no. Okay. So is this indeed a, a rear porch, open air? That's correct. Okay. And then um, is it similarly detailed as proposed for the front porch? Uh, the back will, will actually, the front is, um, is a wooden deck and the rear will be, um, it's actually on a slab. So okay. And that means that the steps themselves will be covered will with pavers or something. Will be covered with pavers. Do you have any of those? Uh, do you have an image or samples of those pavers that you intend to install? Yes, we do. Here, you look through that. I'll look through this. So you intend to install the brick pavers that you have on the sheet, on the steps? That's correct. And how do you propose to finish the nosing of the steps? Uh, I believe that this uh, manufacturer makes nosing. Okay. Um, can we go back to the elevation? I'm sorry. Back to the elevation. Yep. And it also looks like there's a smaller porch on the right hand side of that elevation is that a similar um, finish concrete slab with brick on the steps that's correct and that would be um, the, connected to the breezeway that would go to the accessory structure okay um, can you point out all the columns that are on that are in each of those porch areas for me please because it's very hard to read with your batten lines Maybe you could take a pencil and like color, just quickly shade them in or something, or a pen, just put an X on them, something. I think, I think it's where it says six inch hardy trim. No, those are the door surrounds. Those are your surrounds. I'm sorry. I think it's actually here. And it's, it's open on the west elevation as well, right? That, that's that correct. particular that's correct. porch. So is there a column right there in the corner then where I see the note sand finish stucco? They might want to pull up that floor plan as well. Yeah. 
and we, and that's the that's the mini porch that's yeah. actually the east elevation that's not right. the west elevation even though it's labeled west that's not the west mm -hmm. that's the east Maybe maybe the other one's labeled the east. No, this is actually the. Hmm. This is on the west side. Is no, wait, is is, is side. not the front of actually, the property this north? Is the east side. Yes, yes. you're right. This is the east side. Yes. This is the east side. Could I see the other side? I'm sorry. You gotta back it off. Uh, I'm gonna pull it down just a tad. There's some odd things going on in, in the elevation, so it's very, very hard to read this. Um, can you, do you know where the columns are? Maybe pull the plan up, that's a good idea. Do you have a plan of the, at least the floor, of the first floor? And we're not gonna pick apart the interior, I promise. Can we get it oriented the same way so that it rotate it so that the south is south? Just turn it left once. Like Thank you. We're sticklers for that. Sorry. Okay. So it, um, uh, zoom in just just a tad bit more. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like breathing on my microphone. Um, so that was the column that I that I, that I had pointed out. Just so it looks it looks like yeah it looks like you have one column in the corner and then one two foot four or something seven foot over okay it's hard to read that um, seven feet over and then that's it and then it's open for that's like sixteen feet and then at the which pretty much centers the the French doors uh, more or less um, and then at the the mini porch that goes to the garage there's just the one column in the corner okay um can we turn to the garage now please the uh, accessory structure i'm sorry um and look at it's oh i'm sorry can you go back to the west elevation there's one more question on the west or in the yeah on the west which which is the true west not the uh mislabeled and if you could pull it out so I could see the whole, no, the other one, the sorry. Other one. I got it, I got it. <laughs> We're going to make architects out of you guys tonight. Um. So correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understand it, uh, you know, there's a, there's a gable end right that's pretty much the primary component of this facade but you've got a shed type element that's coming off the rear to capture your kitchen and your porches and whatever that second story space is facing the accessory structure mm -hmm. um, is there some relief between the gable end component and that shed like st structure and that means are, you, are they are they so in plane saying, with one another or do they allow so some? So you're talking about this gable end right here. Yeah. So are and are this, this yeah. right here? Do the walls do the walls live together in the same line, or is there some relief between them? I think it's offset um, because of the uh, the neighbor's tree. Yes. Oh, that's correct. Yes. You did mention that before. Can I see the plan again? I'm sorry. Do you know what that offset is? From the from the line of the lanai wall to the wall of the primary facade. Oh, on the floor plan. Okay. Yeah, let's look at the floor plan again. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Oh yeah, can we just zoom in a little bit to that? Oh yeah, so that's about what a foot and a half or so. It looks like it. Okay. Um, Back to the accessory structure elevations, please. Thank you.
The uh, just the accessory structure. That's all. That's all we. Need. Oh, I see. You have a combined elevation. Okay. The upper one, though, that's an interior view, correct? So it's facing the rear yard. That's correct. The, the, okay. Yes, that's correct. The upper one faces the rear. And where yard. does the fence line end on that one? Does it come right up to the rear in this regard on the upper elevation? I believe it comes to about where that column is. But, uh, Could you point with your finger, please? I'm sorry. It would terminate right here. So it dies into that corner. Okay. And then back to the other two elevations, if you don't mind. Just pop them back up. For, okay. Um, so we talked about the garage doors. The north elevation. So the north elevation is facing the house. That's the covered walkway. Could we look at the um, the east elevation, which is labeled west again, please? There we go. Perfect. Aha. So I missed that. Okay, so you step the gable end down there to receive the walkway covering. And what is in that space there? Is that, you're not parking, obviously, a vehicle in that lower gabled condition, correct? In the accessory structure? Here. In the, in the structure itself, you have, right, where that shorter gable element is. Okay. What is in the space inside? Inside of inside of here? No, 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 in the lower part. Oh, yep. the lower part. I believe that has to do with the maximum, um, where we, I think you're only, I don't know, remember what the number is, but I think it's 600 square feet. You're allowed for an accessory structure. 750, 750 yep. sorry. So that's how you were trying to get there. But, but within that, what I'm trying to get to is what's behind that wall on the lower elevation? The garage. Um, oh, the garage. So you actually, in fact, are parking a car right there. Yes. Um, was there any consideration for that elevation having any type of opening? I understand the premise of security and the need for being cautious about that. However, many of us live with historic structures with glazed openings in our garages, to be quite honest. So um, just wondering, did you consider any type of opening there in that lower area? Uh, that wasn't brought up, but we could, we could definitely consider that. If that okay. Was All right. And then in terms of the windows on this elevation, because actually this elevation gives me a lot more grief than the other ones, because of its location, I know it's the alleyway, um, and I understand the consideration for you know whatever the uses are on the other sides of the wall, but there's some oddities to it um, in terms of, um, for me at the first floor most specifically, you have these two, these two openings, and one of them might be recessed in that smaller porch area, but they have a consistent seal height, and then everything else does something different. You understand what I'm saying? The bottom of the windows, Which window is it? Is it this on one? the on the lower level, yeah. So those those guys speak differently. They also have different head heights um, to one another. And then when you follow that line all the way back to that little porch inset area, that window and the first window, they're very happy together, right? They speak the same language. They're doing the same thing, but the other guys are doing different things. Is is there is there definitely a reason for being, or can that be reconsidered in terms of how they're arranged to one another and along that elevation as well? Um, this here is a um, is a butler's pantry. Okay. Um, and I think there's cabinets. That's why it's the, the sill is at, at that height. Okay. And then here is a kitchen. Okay. All right. Well, I think I've taken enough time. Any other questions from my fellow commissioners or concerns? <sighs> questions, I mean, not concerns. We've talked about those. Ron, ones. at the very end, while ago, there was something submitted into the record. Was that the last lady that spoke? The last lady had additional um, 
uh, uh, information that was uh, submitted into the record of supporting her request. There was like six or seven different uh, signatures on that. Thank you. Meaning six or seven additional property owners? Property owners assigned a generic letter supporting her position. Okay. Beverly, why don't you go ahead and pass that around um, while they're in their, their question phase. Any other questions? Um, we, had, we also had um, six letters of no objection to our plan as well. We, we did get that. Thank yeah. you very much. It is in our packet. And I've lost my card. Sorry. I need my teach. So um, I believe we're all finished asking our questions. So you have five minutes for rebuttal. You can enter anything new that you think would help, you know, answer any outstanding questions or just summarize what you've stated. Yeah, really just, I think I just need to hit two issues because two issues came up and that was the trees. Right? We, we followed the process, the natural resource. People like their trees, but the fact is we're maintaining the grand tree in the front. We reoriented the, the house to accommodate that. The other trees are allowed to come out, uh, whether it's uh, you know this project or another project. The other issue, well, maybe two other issues. The other issue is this size of the, the house. Uh, I showed you pictures. I don't have the calculations, but Hyde Park on Jaton, there's very large pre-existing multifamily. So I, I, I can't believe those are part of the equation that was calculated, maybe for the houses. But this, this street is, you know, typical Hyde Park where there's multifamily, there's single family. And I, the pictures that I showed you, I believe, support the bulk, the size of this home consistent with the street pattern and the houses and the multifamily that's on the street. So the trees, frankly, I, I don't believe necessarily in them. I, I know you're concerned, really a jurisdiction of this board. The, the house, the size of the house, keep in mind, it can be multifamily. It can be two units. Uh, it's zoned for that. We're totally complying with the setbacks uh, and the, the, the bulk of the, the building, which is very consistent. If, if anything, it's smaller than a number of the buildings that I showed you. And then finally, I understand the concern about utilizing the, the alley. Again, we have a right to use that alley. The alley is actually consistent with the historic nature of Hyde Park in this particular street specifically it should go back into the alley. That's where the traffic should go. That's where the, and there's a 14 foot um, drive, which is consistent with the city's requirements. The city staff, the transportation has no objection to that. And I, I think, and you know this, the bottom line is the history of, certainly Hyde Park is a pedestrian history. And then I like to read part of the requirements in the Hyde Park design of compatible new construction. Because Hyde Park is a pedestrian-oriented neighborhood, new projects should relate to the human experience and scale providing unobstructed pedestrian access and shelter and or shade along the streets. And the fact is, Hyde Park, pedestrians were king before the cars came. We all know what happened with the cars. Everyone's trying to go back to that. This, this orientation of this house, preserving that large tree in the front, putting the, the garage in the back, that's how it's supposed to be. And that's how they designed this, working with your staff. So I, I, I appreciate the fact that this, this design is, uh, is different. There is some precedent, like I said, to the design, especially the Oregon House. I'm sure we can uh, address a number of those issues that you talked about. But generally, within the purview of the board, this board and the, and the regulations and the ordinance, we feel like we've met those requirements. Thank you. Thank you. So now um, we will go ahead and close the public hearing and the commissioners will discuss the case amongst themselves. Anyone want to open with any concerns? I kind of actually like this house. Um, when I first saw the uh, elevations, uh, the, particularly the front uh, uh, street elevation, um, I was really not terribly cognizant of the fact that this was being discussed as some sort of a vernacular uh, farmhouse uh, sort of design. Uh, I immediately gave thought to either a Tudor vernacular Tudor revival or, or, or a Gothic revival, uh, which uh, we think of as very grand, 
uh, edifices, but once we get into a domestic scale, it becomes very, very much simplified. Um, I found it really kind of charming. Now, there is a discussion about, you know, the, the scale and, and bulk of uh, this, this home. Uh, we've reviewed, you know, dwellings of all manners of sizes, one story, two stories, and, and such. Uh, that in terms of where this is located, particularly with its immediate neighbors, which is a mixed bag of all sorts of different uh, uh, dwelling types, uh, I don't see a particular heartache or a discrepancy from what is presented as an existing scale of, of a, a number of, not just a few, but a number of other buildings in the immediate proximity. So I think we're pretty much really, I think it's pretty much on target with that. Okay. Any other thoughts? I'm not as much concerned with the size either. Um, I think the way it's been associated, you know, the way it's on the lot itself, mm -hmm. the way it's situated in there, it's going to fit. Um, it's honoring the street line. I, I, Definitely understand the farmhouse look and and the, the, it's the new direction a lot of people are going. Um, done correctly, I think it can probably fit within the constraints of Hyde Park. Done incorrectly, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. And really, I feel like there were a lot of aspects which we asked a lot of questions but particularly the exterior finishes that still need some work I agree there's a lot of detailing that 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 um, needs to be massaged uh, the the uh, the nature of uh, what is surrounding the doors and the windows in terms and in the corners of the building it's the front its scale and its consistency versus 5b crimp which to me a 5b crimp probably goes better with a farmhouse look. Um, and it's more consistent historically. I mean, if we're talking about consistent. historic precedents, that's, those are the things uh, that stand out. The yeah. windows, I personally am a fan of separating the windows, especially in these districts. But with a farmhouse look, you can go either or. So even, a, or. even in a farmhouse, if we were to look at a historic farmhouse, they'd still have them because and they would because, because they most of them were Built on hung, side. not casement right. windows. And even in a casement window, my casement windows from 1938 have the double, you know, they have the trim piece between them. So because you know our our mechanisms still have to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I I think my struggle always is. Um, is this truly historic or just trying to fit in in a particular way but not getting the whole, we're not going to get the whole kit and caboodle, right? And there's a very fine line in preservation. Do you completely copy a style or do you give homage to it in particular ways and allow for, for maybe not everything being as buttoned up as you might expect for a property that is contributing and they're working within that context. Well, and, and tip, typically, there would be a, a mullion between those pair of windows as an example. Absolutely. Okay. But it, it would still not be as major as uh, um, um, one that would be using for lifting mechanisms in, in, in a single or double hung window. But you would still have a, a a, se a minor separation in a, in, yeah. in a manner of batten or covering or mullion element separating the two. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's probably there in part of the plan, if you want to think about it, what you think about, you're going to get two windows, you're going to put them together, you just can't gank them, you're going to have to have an element. Well, these windows are going to be, and that was one of the reasons, one of the questions I asked, uh, these windows are going to be ordered as a twin unit or a triple unit. And so the mole itself will be very, very minimal, yeah. if any. Um, and the, the follow-up comments that y'all just made really are in line with exactly what I was saying, was 
the design itself is, is a nice design. But the lack of components that would normally be in line with what we would see in Hyde Park and some of our other historic districts are lacking. The detailing. The yeah. detailing is, is, is lacking. Because even if we do have some variety of scale in terms of the different types of residential properties that surround this particular lot, if you were to look at the historic components, you would understand there's a sense of detailing um, and, and understanding how things go together just by looking at their facades, right? And I think that's probably the most lacking here. The other thing, too, that doesn't help is looking at drawings that are not consistent with things that we're being told are going to be in the project. And I, I just want to say this. We, we come across this a lot. Um, when you're submitting drawings, we're, human beings are visual. We learn 90% of what we know through visual graphic means. And for those of us who are in this business, we are trained in that, even contractors. So um, if, it, if it doesn't match what we're hearing, we're going to ask those questions. <laughs> he, knows <laughs> I, he knows what I mean. Um, and, and, and it would help so much more with the clarity of the discussion. And we wouldn't have to spend so much time drawing it out of you if the drawings match what you stated you're going to be presenting, right? So. Um, and for me, I do. I feel like there's there is a there is a little bit more um, clarity that needs to go into the documents to be comfortable with what's going what forward. What concerns me is on a recommendation, a potential recommendation. There's going to be a, literally a laundry list at this point of things we've got to put in there, or we've got to put it on staff's back to potentially do this, um, there's just a lot of inconsistencies. The windows, the window seal, the, the, the details showing the concrete seal versus we're going to wrap it. You know, again, I, once it leaves here and it's approved, it's kind of, it's gone. Right. The ship right. has sailed at that point. And uh, I, I think, I, I see an opportunity here for a really nice project. I agree. Um, it's moving in the right direction, I do feel. I just feel. feel like that we may be just lacking and then a little premature. That's just me. Um, and I think that they could do some things and they could make, they, they could take some suggestions and make some moves that would also enable their neighbors and themselves to work out and everyone somewhat work together so that so that everyone is, is is happy and excited that this new project is coming into the neighborhood. I agree. I agree. Um, I'd also like us to address the design exemption. Mm -hmm. um, they are already packing a great deal of house into this lot, and I think that providing an exemption to allow a second story on the on an accessory building. Um, is probably inappropriate. So that, we can't on, rule yeah, on yeah. that at all. Okay. They, they have oh, an so exception have in with the city, okay, so not with our board. All right. So yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So yeah. we are. <coughs> so we uh, we accept the whole package, or not, or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are there's a lack of detail. I look at the little tiny windows with the same size. Uh, trim around them and I go uh, what there might be a little more uh, uh, windows care got, about those we, got, we have windows placement window details door details door panels roofing uh, a column column wraps if you will uh, and it's related details up, they're, they're we have fence small. fence and gate details so the columns weren't even brought up in our discussion but they're somewhat small yeah, well, they, they we, we didn't farm, even go into they that. They fit with the farmhouse look, but there right. again, going back to what we typically see in Hyde Park mm -hmm. and what we would have seen 100 years ago, they would have been larger. Yeah. Or maybe two smaller or, gang together or as more. an example. Exactly. 
So there are a couple of things I want to say that are positives for this project because I think it's helpful for the applicants to hear those things as well. One of the things I do think um, that is working is the placement of the accessory structure. I know that has been some heartache around that um, with some of the letters we, we read. Um, for me, I, I just want to commend that placement, um, understanding that there are two alleyways that you're contending with so that it opens up the opportunity for whomever lives in this household to have a space that isn't confronted by two alleyways. It also allows their neighbors to enjoy their space without, you know, roofs upon roofs right next to them. And then that opportunity to reintroduce trees at some point, right? So um, I am a huge advocate for our tree canopy. It's one of the most beautiful things about our city when you can get up and you look down and you see, excuse me, you see all the trees we have. You can go to many cities our size and you don't see how many trees we have. And it's, it's just one of those beautiful things that when you're in them and they shade you and they frame your views, I totally get it. I do think maintaining the front tree is the right move and you're doing all the appropriate things by moving back and thinking about your foundation and allowing for that tree to live its longest life possible. Um, but I also understand the need to have um, the opportunity to put in place a structure that is um, of its place and of its time, right? And we have larger families and we have larger spaces. With COVID, we have seen the move to bring our families closer together and incorporate more spaces to allow for that, as well as working from home. Um, with the garage, although we do not have any, um, any purview over the design exception, I personally and professionally do not see an issue with it. Historically, it is, it is consistent. Knowing many people who have, who have two-story garages that are historic and they enjoy them either with their families or guests, I completely understand it and it's historically appropriate. So there are many things that are going well for this project. I, I just think that there are too many that there may be some discomfort with the motion. So before we go to an up down vote, yes. Yes. So what I'm hearing is that the, generally the, the scale, the size, and the general design is okay, but there's these details that I've tried to take notes on. I mean, we, we request a continuance to try to d address those issues as opposed to an up and down vote tonight. Okay. I mean, and that was going to be my next question to you. Right. So, so the, and I will only say that I'm going to review the tape, but, you know, and we're going to try to get everyone's issues, but then we're back again. So it's... It is what it is. We'll try to address all the things you mentioned, but it's still kind of a little bit of a crapshoot which ones we do and we bring back, but that's, that's part of the deal. So we'll do the best mm -hmm. we can. Uh, we'll, we'll listen to the tape. I think a lot of these things we can address. And as I hear too, is just also show the better scale of like the, the uh, battens on the, on the yeah. plans. So that, that would you be see helpful. It, that's what I heard. You know, the battens are much, they're much wider than they actually are uh, articulated as being one by two. So we'd prefer a continuance, obviously, than a, um, because we think we can deal with all those issues. Well, what I'm hearing is generally the style is okay, the, the, the garage is okay, the size is okay, so we just need to deal with these details. And, uh, and details are important. Yes, they are. <laughs> so we would request a continuance. Okay, thank you. Um, before we make that motion, can we ask for the next available date? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Doug. Thank you, Mr. Dennis Fernandez, Architects Review and Historic Preservation Manager. Based on our current caseload, the next available hearing will be January 3rd, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. I'd like to move to grant a continuation, grant a continuance in case ARC 
21-488 for the property located at 1702 West Jeton Avenue to the January 3rd, 1922 public 20, hearing. 2022. Uh, yes. 20. January 23rd, 2022 public hearing at 5.30 p.m. Did you? Oh, sorry. I think you said January. January 20th. I was just about to ask again. Can you just Oops. start all over? Start all over? Okay. Yes. I move to grant a continuance in case in case ARC 21-488 for the property located at 1702 West Jeton Avenue to the January now this is January 3rd, right? Yes. January 3rd. 2022 public hearing at 5.30 p.m. I, have a I will second that motion. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand indicating aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to our next case. Does anyone need a break or are we good? No, good. Good evening, Commissioners Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. The last case that we will review this evening is ARC 21-312. This is for the address of 713 South Orleans. This is also in the Hyde Park Historic District. The primary structure was constructed in 1915, is deemed contributing. The zoning attached to this is RS-60. The uh, request is twofold. Uh, they have a variance request for a building separation from five foot to two foot six inches and a certificate of appropriateness for new construction addition to the primary structure and renovations to the contributing structure. I spoke with the agent uh, as he moves through his presentation. He's going to address the variance first. On page three of your staff report, previous actions on this uh, parcel, the primary structure and the detached accessory structure have always been uh, or shared that relationship. In 1990, uh, this same variance was uh, requested and approved. In 2012, it came back with a different uh, site plan and was approved again. In 2019, uh, this board saw it and granted the same Eve to Eve variance, and then it's in front of you today. So I wanted to share that past action with you. That's on page three. Moving through the photos, the Sanborn map is uh, usually where I like to start. Property in question is highlighted in the green shaded area. As a reference point, you have Swan to the north. Uh, property in question is on Orleans, it's 713 Orleans, it faces uh, to the east. You have an alley that runs to the rear and you have Inman to the south. This is the structure back in May. This was prior to uh, me meeting with the owner uh, on site. Uh, he's got a request in front of you that he wants to change the siding on the historic portion of the home to match the profile and the lap of the addition that is going to come forward. Uh, the profile on the house has a tighter exposure that I'm sure will be uh, expressed through the presentation uh, this evening. So the front and the side elevations have uh, an aluminum siding uh, on top of the original siding. When we started to peel off the siding, we peeled off some of the aluminum siding. Under the aluminum siding was asbestos siding. We peeled off some of the asbestos siding and you saw uh, some of the original material with plywood and things of that nature will be apparent through the uh, photo presentation that the agent will share with you uh, later. The photo here that I have on the screen is the front elevation with the porch and then this is the north exposure. Going down the drive aisle, once again, all of this was cladded in an aluminum siding, just the primary structure. Uh, the, the rest of the uh, contributing structure, the columns are all original wood, the, the railing is a wood railing, you have brick piers and a brick foundation around it. This is some of the fabric that abuts the uh, house in question. This is the uh, 
to the south of the subject site. This is to the north of the subject site and across the street. Looking at a couple street shots, this is looking down toward the bay to the south, back towards Swan, which is to the north. This is the rear of uh, the, the contributing structure. The rear had a couple of additions that uh, were associated with it. The rear has a rough sawn hardy applied to it. So the, the structure has many different siding materials on it. And then just to conclude, looking back from the structure back so you can understand the, the rest of the, the site. Uh, that concludes my photo presentation and Mr. Michelini will address the board. Steve, please start with the variance just, first. Just saying we've got a technical issue going on here. Uh, Steve. Steve Michelini, uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Andre McDowell and um, Garrett Gilkey, who is the contractor and designer in his, his uh, operations. Um, if I could just procedurally, uh, once I go through the variance, Ron, it's a, am I asking for support for that before we move on to the rest of the structure? You have 15 minutes to, to, to review the variance portion of it. At that time, once you conclude the variance portion, they'll go into deliberation. Board does, ha does not comment on variances. Get an up or down vote on the variance. If you get a positive vote, then we'll proceed to the certificate right. of appropriate. I, I just want to make sure we're dealing with the variance first, yeah. and then we'll go into the design uh, proposal. Um, as Ron stated, that this, uh, this structure was built in 1915, and the eave to eave separation, as he also noted, um, was approved by previous variances. Uh, the city is asking for us to come back to you to clarify and revest that separation from eave to eave. It is in the rear of the property. Um, we are proposing to add a second floor addition, which would maintain that, sa that same separation eave to eave on the second level as it currently exists on the first level. Uh, as such, these are, are not uh, particularly considered to be self-created hardships. This was designed and built this way. We're simply asking to add that second level, which would again maintain that same separation. Uh, it is in the rear of the property, so it does not adversely affect any surrounding property owner. Uh, and it's between the two property or the two structures within the site, so it's not on the exterior. And again, uh, this would affect only the, the property owner himself or herself, for that matter. <clears throat> um, the practical difficulties exist because it's existing structures and uh, we're not proposing to change that dimension at all except as I noted to go to the second level. It did, would not injure the health, safety and welfare of anyone else. Again, uh, this is an existing condition and we're asking to vest that for the lower level as well as the addition on the second level. Uh, it is in harmony with the codes regarding the overlay district or the Hyde Park uh, Historic District. As you will see, there are many uh, accessory structures that are in close proximity to the main structure. So this is not an introduction of a new element. It in fact reflects uh, many of the other structures that are within the district. Substantial justice will be done uh, by allowing us to continue with the same development pattern and the same separation that already exists and simply adding the elevation to the second level. Uh, it is consistent with the design standards with respect to other homes uh, and other, other design characteristics that are outlined in the old uh, historic district. And uh, as again, it does not introduce a new element. It simply vests what is there and allows us to add the second level. Um, I'll get into the design uh, criteria for this a little bit later on when we go into uh, exactly what, what's being proposed in the back. But um, simply stated, there's a, a rebuilding of the patio and porch on the rear, and then a proposal to add a master bedroom extension on the second level. Uh, I'll certainly be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, 
if this were a brand new variance and not already existing in this condition, I would go into a lot more detail and, and justification. But as such, we're not planning to, to expand that footprint. Um, we simply want to build on top of it and maintain the same separation between the main structure and accessory structure. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have uh, regarding that element. I don't need the 15 minutes unless, of course, the board has questions. Thank you, sir. Um, Ron, I'm so sorry. Do we, do we still allow for public comment? We do, right? Um, so we'll go ahead and, um, sorry, our staff will, will, will present the report and then we'll open it up to com public comment. Thank you, sir. Staff is silent on the variance portion to this request. Uh, the agent did address the hardship criteria on Exhibit C that is in everybody's packet. You could uh, refer to that or you could ask questions as you review this portion of the request. And then uh, however this motion goes, then we'll see how the public hearing co continues. Thank you. If there is anybody present who would like to speak for or against the variance in this case, you may do so at this time. Please come forward, state your name, your property, or your address, and, and then you have three minutes. Seeing no one. We'll go ahead and close that out, um, and the commissioners will discuss the variance. We'll ask. Can we? Questions. We can ask questions, sir. Um, I do have a question. Do you have a site plan? And could uh, we please look at that? We need me to go closer. Um, just point out where the variance is being requested because we um, have a description but no visuals. This is the existing uh, okay. This is the existing separation from the accessory structure to the main structure and this is the proposed which is exactly the same only it occurs on the first and second levels of the house. Okay. And I, I assume I, the, the eaves on the original lower portion is the same because that's what the statement is is that yes, the eve to yes. eve is the same yes okay. and, and this is a, a blow up of that same that same area i'm sorry i should have presented that in the original you're you're fine thank my you. my bad sorry all good um i have no other questions commissioners Ordinarily, I'm not a big fan of variances, but owing to the fact here that we're dealing with uh, it's almost an administrative detail, if you will, uh, respecting an existing condition um, uh, without change uh, to uh, 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 an existing separation or uh, a change to an existing footprint, uh, to me, makes it uh, acceptable. Any questions for the applicant? I have none. Commissioner. All right, well, you have five minutes for rebuttal if you want to use the time you may. No, thank you. I think we could all use a, a deep breath of thank fresh you. air right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Commissioners will discuss the case. Um, if there's any other comment that you'd like to make in consideration of the variance, please do so. If not, maybe a motion. I disagree with my fellow commissioner. Um, I'm not a big fan of variances, but the dimensions are already there. Exactly. I agree. And it's been approved many times before, so. Motion, anyone? Would anyone I like to make we're dealing with item number one, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I'm trying we're to only say. dealing with the variance with request. just the variance. Right. So you're correct. It's this side of the page. Yes, I do. Please, if I may, then. I move that the variance request for ARC number A, uh, 21 1312 for the property located. It's 3112? 3112. Yep located at 713 South Orleans Avenue in the Hyde Park District be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at this public hearing 
for a variance separation of from five foot zero inches to two foot six inches uh, for based upon the petitioner meeting the burden of proof with respect and regard to the six hardship criteria set forth in section 27-114 subsection D of the City of Tampa Code of Ordinances for granting variances as stated and the evidence provided in this public hearing, specifically that existing conditions are being maintained. And can you state that the, the um, it's five feet I did. He, no, he, for eve to eve separation. Uh, I wish to add, uh, add to that 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 uh, variance is from five foot zero inches to two foot six inches in an eve to eve separation. I'll second that. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand, indicating so. Aye. 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 Opposed. Seeing none. Motion carries. Thank you very variance much. Variance is accepted. So move on to the next portion. Okay, I, I showed you the, uh, the site plan briefly regarding the eve to eve separation. If you look on this side here, this is the existing, um, the existing single family residence uh, on the site. And as I showed you a second ago, the eve to eve separation between the accessory structure. This, I guess I got to zoom out a little bit. This is the proposed site plan um, for the renovation of the, of the porch and the addition, the second level addition of the master bedroom. This is all interior to the site. Uh, again, it it keeps uh, in size and scale in terms of height and dimensions. It doesn't increase any of those. Um, it, it does provide for a more living space on the second level. Uh, and it provides for the, um, the porch down below to be covered. This is the side-by-side -side, uh, view regarding the floor plan uh, for the existing structure is on the on the, this side over here on the left, and the proposed addition is on the right. This is the first floor plan. This is the second floor plan showing the extension of the master bedroom on the second level and the removal and rebuilding of the first level over here on the right. I'm sorry, on the, on, on the left. Um, this is the attic plan uh, showing the existing attic floor plan and the extension when the, um, when the expansion occurs on the second level. Here's the uh, proposed front elevation. This is the existing uh, front elevation. Um, there is the proposed front elevation um, for the renovation. And if you can see that this, this is not changing. We're, we're renovating uh, the existing design, the size and scale, it all remains the same. If you'll note on the, um, on the gable end, we're proposing a, a, a change in the design and the reintroduction of the windows uh, that uh, we had found some evidence that there previously was uh, this, this type of opening here. And uh, it had been removed and boarded up. And I'll be have, I'm gonna show you some photographs of that where we removed the siding that was existing. Um, this is designated as a contributing structure and I'm not really sure exactly how it got to be a contributing structure because it, it, is, it is such a hodgepodge. Um, if you were to try to build it, you would never have been able to build that uh, or renovate it in the style in which it was renovated. Um, this is the rear elevation showing 
the uh, proposed change. Uh, this is the existing elevation and this is the rear elevation. Uh, the rear elevation addition is proposed to be with hardy board um, and the remaining portions of the building being renovated would be the uh, wooden lapboard siding. And I'll get into that as well, but we're requesting that that be the seven inch lap board as opposed to the two inch. Um, I'll, I'll go into more detail on that later on, but just for, for argument's sake right now, uh, we're proposing to match that with wood siding for the existing structure and hardy board for the uh, addition. This is a side elevation, the south view, which shows, uh, shows you the covered porch and the second floor addition for the um, master bedroom. And it shows you a renovated uh, portion of the front porch. Basically, this entire home is gonna be rebuilt on the exterior side because it is in such a poor condition. This is the side elevation uh, on the north side of the building. And again, we've introduced the, um, the boxing up here and the reintroduction of the, uh, of the windows in the, in the gable end. And that's, the, that's basically the only change that we have. We're still maintaining the asphalt shingle roof and that will be extended all throughout. And you can see the, uh, the covered porch, master bedroom, and the small balcony on the, on the rear. I'm going to have to zoom in on this one. I don't, I don't, if this is in your package, I'm not sure if you can read this. Um, but the windows that were being uh, proposed will all be recessed. They will not be flush mounted. Many of the windows in the existing house are flushed with the out exterior wall. Um, and then we're going to uh, provide the <clears throat> the battens around the window so that it will it will read as a true recessed window. The foundation is existing. Uh, we're not sure exactly what we're going to have to do to that, but if we do rebuild it, it'll be rebuilt and consistent with the same elevation, same building materials that exist. Here's another this other, the wall section. This is showing the rear addition um, and the proposal for, for how we're gonna support the second level of that room addition on the rear for the master bedroom. It also shows you the, um, the porch, the, por the uh, floor joist and supports and we're also proposing that that be a wooden deck. Could we zoom out a little bit because it's a little hard to see the full drawing. Down or up? Um, I was just saying zoom out, but you can do that too. Thank you. Which way do you want me to, do you want me to leave it there? It, it's good. Thank you. Are we okay? Can I move on? Oh. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm moving on to the uh, materials palette now. And you saw this briefly a minute ago regarding the variance for the eve to eve separation. Uh, we're proposing the historic red brick pavers that be used extensively uh, throughout the walkways, restored or replaced as necessary. The balcony and back porch, uh, composite wood decking, treks. This is only on the, on the addition now. This is not on the existing structure. Uh, the soffit and porch ceiling would be uh, wood beadboard. It would be painted. And this is, this is the front porch, so we're going to be using wood uh, throughout all of the existing structure of the, of the old uh, existing home. Existing columns and beams or details is to match. Those, uh, those columns will be maintained the same width and the same dimensions and tapering that exists on the house currently. There are 12 inch tapered columns uh, that we're proposing on the rear porch. 
and that would be matching the same design and consistency as the front. We're asking for wood siding uh, on the main structure, a seven inch exposed, um, exposed siding for the contributing structure and seven inch exposed hardy on the rear new construction. And that will differentiate the addition from the main structure. This is the uh, proposed wood casing details and the wood casing for the contributing structure and hardy smooth uh, primed for non-contributing addition in the rear. All the windows to be replaced with uh, custom wood from contributing structure and gel wind wood clad for the non-contributing structure. These are the exterior doors uh, for the bonus room, gel wind wood craft, uh, craftsman wood, wood can you see all of that or do I need to change this? You could zoom out just a tad. There you go, that's great. Uh, proposed entry door, the gel wind custom wood, exterior three quarter view, four light, one panel painted. And the accordion bifold doors, this is in the rear panel, of, this is the rear patio area. The new exterior door and French doors, this is for the second level uh, of the master bedroom that goes out onto the balcony. Again, this is a wood clad. Uh, I don't think you really care left hand or right hand swing, but um, <laughs> but anyway, that's that's on the second level of the balcony. Uh, we're planning to use restoration hardware, uh, brass knob, finished oil rub, bronze for the the hardware. Ceiling fans are the air <coughs> slipstream coal black outdoor ceiling fans. Uh, ceilings to flush mounted fixture lights, exterior wall sconce light. The soffit and fascia detail are exposed rafters. We found some evidence of exposed rafters before. Uh, some of them had been trimmed off at the edge of the building line uh, and some had been, had, they were actually scabbed onto but we want to reintroduce that back into the design element. The bracket detail, we found a couple of broken brackets. Um, there are no existing photographs of, uh, of existing condition. However, it would be consistent with the design element of the home. Um, the shingles being proposed, again, uh, asphalt shingles and their um, lifetime and the color obviously is be something compatible with the Hyde Park guidelines. Um, you've seen this picture before in uh, Ron's presentation. This is the uh, front view of the home in existing conditions. The southeast and east elevations. And again, the, uh, the porch and all of the front um, would be restored back to its original condition with wood, um, wood elements and not, uh, and not the hardy plank. The hardy would be reserved for the rear addition. And this is the rear view. And you see the, uh, the accessory structure here. And so this, this section in here is where the um, the second floor addition and the covered porch would occur. It's, um, we were asked by staff to remove the non-conforming paneling that existed on the house. And what we discovered was that 85% of the materials on the exterior were non-conforming. The wood trim, the doors, the gable ends, um, there were aluminum windows, there were a number of other elements that were not uh, consistent with the Hyde Park guidelines. So our proposal would be to reintroduce compatible uh, elements that, <clears throat> that would match and meet the Hyde Park standards. When we pulled off some of the siding, we found uh, in many cases that there was, um, there simply was plywood. In some cases there was uh, asbestos and um, the asphalt uh, 
uh, regular tar paper. There was a hodge, hodgepodge of different things. Uh, but we removed several different sections all along the uh, exterior of the front and sides of the house and including both of the gable ends. And uh, we just, we could not find a consistent development pattern for the two inch um, lapboard siding the staff is recommending to us. We found uh, extensive uh, examples of as, uh, um, asbestos siding throughout this project, um, which we have removed appropriately through the environmental safety standards, and uh, it's bagged and, and been removed off site. If you see the uh, brick sidewalk in the front, that will be restored and the bricks will be either replaced uh, or cleaned and in place. But we're gonna keep the same standard as, as shown here. Um, if you look very closely at this, at this particular photograph, you can see that we have asbestos siding underneath. We actually had three levels of different types of siding. Uh, we had the, um, the typical weather barrier with the, um, with the tar paper and then we had asbestos shingles over that, and we also had plywood, and then we had vinyl siding on top. So um, it, was a, it was a real interesting uh, evolution, I guess, of over time of what they did to, to change the home. Um, vinyl and asbestos siding above was removed from both of the gable fronts, and it was exposed uh, up in here. The non-conforming corner boards and the existing seven inch side, uh, vinyl siding we're proposing to remove. The seven inch vinyl uh, with the asbestos um, beneath is showing the one by four framing. So in many cases we found just one by four boards underneath the, uh, the vinyl siding. So you didn't even have the, as uh, the asbestos shingles and you just had the uh, vinyl siding being placed over one by fours it uses a backing board with the insulation, but we removed all of that. Um, these are the flush mounted windows that I mentioned to you, and it has uh, aluminum soffits, which we will change out and convert them back to the wooden soffits. This is the photograph that I was referring to regarding the backing boards and the insulation. Um, it, it was, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, it was a real interesting uh, combination of non-conforming solutions to uh, improving the, the, the house. The, uh, the, <clears throat> the gable end windows were aluminum and um, they were flush mounted so there was, there was no recess there and our proposal is to replace them, recess them and um, place um, a more compatible historic pattern for our windows and this is where we were proposing the the boxing on the upper level. And you can see all of the asbestos shingles that are now exposed once we remove the vinyl siding. Another photograph, this is up on the upper level of the gable end where we find these uh, one by four framing details. Uh, and we had to remove the asbestos shingles. It was, uh, th this was a total nightmare, I'll tell you. Um, and Ron Bennett went out to the site with us several times and uh, he viewed it in himself. So, I mean, uh, he can certainly attest to the fact that this was a hodgepodge of, of different, different types of elements. This is another photograph of the same uh, other gable end. And uh, the removal, you can see the, the framing where there used to be uh, windows and other architectural features there instead of just blocking them off. They, they just boarded them up and went put vinyl siding over the top of them. And in, one, in some cases, this had asbestos shingles on top of it. Um, now I'll get to the, the, the only issue that I know of that we have a difference of opinion with staff on, and that is regarding the, 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 um, the dimension of the lapboard siding. <clears throat> the owner, um, when he bought the house, it, had obviously the seven inch vinyl siding. He liked the look of the seven inch and we want to continue that. Um, and I just point out to you that in the guidelines it says uh, that it, it should match the original as closely as possible. 
and I'm not really sure which which element you want us to match because they, obviously the asbestos is not a good match and the vinyl siding is not a good match per se. The, certainly the materials don't are not consistent. So <clears throat> we're asking for some consideration to allow us to go back to a seven inch uh, wood lapboard siding for the exterior of the main historic contributing structure. And as I said earlier, I'm not sure how it got to be contributing with all of those bastardizations that occurred with the design and the material selection. But um, this occurs on page 46 of the design guidelines where it says, uh, if it must be replaced, a new siding should match the original as closely as possible. We could only find one place uh, along the side of the building where there was two inch lapboard siding. Uh, and that was not extensive. I'm not sure if they had removed it before um, or it had rotted and that's why they introduced the vinyl uh, and the asbestos siding or not. But um, it is a, a debatable point and we're asking for relief and consideration uh, since it does match the Hyde Park guidelines um, and we're trying our best to make sure that the entire house is made compatible. We have other examples uh, in the immediate area for the wood siding exposure that's seven inch as opposed to the two inch and the 720 South Orleans and 802 South Orleans. And then reintroducing the, the exposed rafter tails uh, which have been compromised on the existing structure. Uh, we're requesting our ability to reintroduce those rafter tails as a design element which would make it uh, more historically accurate and consistent with the Hyde Park guidelines. Um, I'm going to show you two examples of the gable paneling and bracket details uh, which exist in the area and we're asking to be able to replicate that on the upper level above the porch um, and to the end of the top of the gable end. And this is 715 Orleans uh, <coughs> and 906 South Willow. And you can see the element of the windows and the, the, uh, the venting that occurs there. So I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. I think that uh, we've, we've addressed everything. The size, the scale remains the same. The massing and the building form remains the same. The only addition is in the, in the rear, which does not affect anybody else. The orientation and the site coverage remains the same. We're not changing any of those elements. The alignment and the materials within the district that are permitted, we're reintroducing those for the compromised portions of the building and re, essentially rebuilding it. <clears throat> we're taking this building down to the skeleton and then rebuilding it basically from the inside out. So um, I think that we're making a great step toward making this a contributing, a real contributing structure instead of one that was simply added to the list. <clears throat> um, we're going to be maintaining the same type of materials that are allowed in the district. <clears throat> and uh, actually we'll be improving that in terms of the uh, weather tightness of the building, the waterproofing of the building. Um, and all of this will be consistent again on all of the front part of the existing structure. The trim and the trim details will match all of the Hyde Park guidelines. We're not asking for any extensions and we're not asking for any conditions or compromises in that regard. The facade and the proportions and the window patterns will remain the same. The only change is reintroducing the windows and the venting on the upper level of the gable ends. <coughs> The entrances and porch projections remain the same. We'll be rebuilding those. Uh, the porch has some deterioration. Some of the piers will need to be rebuilt, uh, but we're in the process of evaluating that. And once we get to the building permit stage, those uh, elements will be examined to determine whether or not we have to do much, very much extensive work on that at all. The roof form remains the same. We're not changing any of the pitches on the roof. We are reintroducing the asphalt shingles to the roofing. Um, and again, that's a consistent pattern and it's allowable by the guidelines. The maintenance uh, and the quality within the district, this would become one of your newly renovated homes 
that would be consistent with the guidelines. And it is consistent with the Secretary of State's guidelines and standards. And I know that we disagree with the staff regarding the two inch versus a seven inch lap board siding. However, that's an interpretation and we believe that it says uh, that it's not mandatory, but it's a matter of condition that it says should as opposed to it shall. Uh, and again, we couldn't find a, a prime example of exactly what the original siding was. So um, in terms of rehabilitation, uh, we've used all of the historic elements that are available to us. We've reintroduced them and we have made this building uh, as compatible with the historic guidelines as possible. And um, <clears throat> we're, uh, we've already started removing the artificial, um, the, the siding, the, the vinyl and the, the asbestos shingles and all of that, which to me was a far more egregious violation of the, the guidelines than anything else. And we're asking for your consideration to allow us to go back to the seven inch uh, lap board as opposed to the two inch. I think I've covered everything in the staff report and everything that you normally are asked for you know, with respect to a presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, the staff will now present the report. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. This staff report is a little different than what you're usually uh, to see on a daily basis. I have a, a portion of the staff report that says that it's uh, not consistent, and then I have a portion of the staff report that is consistent. I'm gonna first focus on what's not consistent is the, on the period structure. Um, in the Secretary of Interior Standards and the High Park Design Guidelines, I'm gonna quote from in a minute, but uh, I had asked as we uh, went forward for the owners and agent to remove some of the inappropriate sightings so we could see what was under there and it was evident through some of the photos that were shown to, uh, today. Going back to the original part of the house, after we uh, took off some of the siding there, the uh, vinyl siding and then the asbestos siding, there was evidence of a tight uh, lap siding there, two, two and a half inch profile. There was some in the porch area and then there was some on the north elevation that was, was evident. Uh, as we move forward, uh, there's portions of the, the presentation uh, this evening that shows cladded windows on the whole structure. So uh, portions of the original footprint, if the replacement windows are to be um, introduced, they should be true wood windows on the old portion of the structure and then cladded can be on the new portion uh, of the addition. Also the siding, he talked about siding the different profiles, but as you went to the addition, he talked about the introduction of Hardy. Hardy has been a material that has been approved by this board for new constructions of a, an accessory structure or new construction for the primary structure, but not integrated into a contributing structure. So have uh, you know food for thought as you move forward. In focusing on the profile of the lap siding, um, I'm gonna read from the Secretary of Interior Standards that was included on, on your staff report. So starting on page 10, where it says building exterior with the wood features. The wooden features, both functional and decorative, may be important in defining the historic character of the building, and thus the retention, protection, and repairs are important in rehabilitation to projects. Moving to page 11 on the Secretary of Interior Standards, what's recommended to identify, retain, and preserve identify, retain, and preserve wood features that are important in defining the overall historic character of the buildings, such as the siding, corners, and brackets. What's not recommended in the Secretary of Interior Standards is removing, removing or radically changing features that are important in defining the overall historic character of the building so that the result of the historic character is diminished. Moving to page 14 on the Secretary of Interior Standards, what's recommended? under repairs, repairing wood features by patching, consolidating or otherwise reinforcing wood using recognized preservation methods. Repairs may also include the limited replacement in kind of those extensively deteriorated or missing parts or features where the surviving prototypes such as brackets, molding 
and siding could be recognized and retained and used as a model. What's not recommended is replacing the entire wood feature, such as the corners or wall, when repairs to the wood or limited replacement or deteriorated or missing parts are appropriate. That's from the Secretary of Interior Standards. Now moving to the High Park Design Guidelines. Steve uh, briefly touched upon that. It says that the prevalent type of exterior siding materials on houses in the historic district is wood. The siding is one of the most distinctive characters of the frame houses in Hyde Park. It consists of lap siding running horizontally. The siding should be maintained. If replaced, the new siding should match the original as close as possible, especially with respect to the board size and width of exposure. So that's focusing on the rehabilitation and a lot of the deterioration for the uh, primary house. So the key features that I wanted to point out are, is the, the window replacement in the historic part of the home should be a true wood window with the original lap siding to match. In the addition, cladded windows can, can be an option. And instead of the hardy that was presented this evening to respect uh, the siding, the introduction of the siding and the addition can have the larger profile, the seven inch lap siding, but it has to be true wood siding. Other than that, uh, focusing on the inconsistencies on the primary house, I'll be here to answer any questions. The addition, he did a very thorough uh, presentation and staff has no concerns with the addition portion other than what was stated this evening. Thank you, I'll be here to answer the questions. Thank you, Ron. Now we'll open the hearing up to public comment. If there's anybody present who would like to come forward speaking either for or against, please do so. And seeing none, we'll go ahead and close that component of the hearing. And um, now the commissioners will ask questions of the applicant. And please, um, if we could go in the order of our usual, which is site plan elevations, architectural details, and wall sections, that would be great. Anyone with any site plan questions? None. I don't believe there are any changes to the site plan outside of uh, restoration of, uh, of various uh, brick pieces. However, we do have an addition that's going on the back side of the porch. Can we make a look at that as well too, sir? On the site plan? On the site plan. Yes, sir. To the south side of your elevation uh, of your building, uh, you are proposing an addition as part of this uh, plan. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And that am I also understanding that you're having a flight of stairs down uh, to the west of this? I have to ask my designers here. I'm. I'm <laughs> I think that. The when you come up, could you please state your name? Thank you. She, she, she was not. She was not sworn in. Oh, I'm sorry. Not sworn in. Sorry. <laughs> it's only sort of affirmed that the testimony of the providing the scene is the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes. Amy Holmes Joyner with HGC Design Build. I'm pretty sure the stairs are internal. There's, isn't there an exterior stair? It's a, it's a set of steps. Um, this is from the porch. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's actually called a bonus room, but I would call it a mud room. Um, there was a previous architect that was involved with the client prior to us coming on the project. So we have revised some of the elevations since the last presentation that Ron reviewed um, based on staff comments. Um, but this is a bonus room, mud room, so it would be an access if the client pulls up in the driveway, that would be a side entrance. Okay, so uh, what is the composition of those stairs? That Are they going to be brick much like they are in the front of the house? That's the trex, isn't it? No, those would be brick. Those would be okay, brick. the side is brick. And there's there should be about five risers. Five risers, and, and that's going down to a concrete pad? Currently, it's a concrete driveway. We have not proposed to replace that yeah, concrete, but that could be considered. It's an existing concrete 
yeah. thrive. Okay. okay. Um, so we so we have that. Uh, I notice that you have uh, on the uh, opposite side of this building your utility yard where you have your AC equipment. Those are existing locations. Those are existing locations. Are you not uh, planning on changing or upsizing or adding uh, capacity for your addition upstairs? The, the uh, AC uh, handlers are planning to be changed out, the compressors. Um, but they're in the same, replaced and put back in the same location. Have you thought about screening for those? Um, no, I mean, we can certainly put the typical lattice uh, type of screening so they can breathe and, and they cut down on the, vis the visual aspect of it. We certainly have no objection to that. That is all I have for a question right now. Any other site plan questions? No. Um, any questions regarding the elevations? I have questions regarding the north and south elevations. Could we see the? Could I see the north and south on the screen? South first, as you want to see that one. That's fine. Yes. Can you see? If you could pull that down just a tad, so that both elevations are in view. Thank you. Oh, a little bit up. There we go. Great. Okay. That new the new south elevation. Um, well, let's yeah. Let's look at the proposed south elevation um, my question is where do, where do you intend to uh, stop the wood siding and start the hardy board you know I think the staff made a good point about that hardy board and um, uh, you know, I think that you know we certainly could change that to wood uh, without introducing a different design you know different type of material into that main structure even, even for the addition and I, you know, quite honestly, I didn't really think about that until Ron mentioned it. Um, but we could we could certainly commit to make that all wood. So you're proposing now that uh, instead of Hardy across the board, whether it's on the addition or the contributing structure side, yes, to make it all wood. Yes. Okay. I think that, I mean, you know, in, in consideration, and like I said, I didn't really think about that until Ron mentioned it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that would be a, a nicer touch. We'll still have to distinguish the addition from the contributing existing structure. Um, but I believe the wood would make it more compatible, especially if you allow us to go with a seven, seven inch lap board. <laughs> and, and the, uh, and now, but you, you, want to, you want to see the north side now? Well, now I want to ask about the windows as well because it seems to me like the original that the original structure was square, and so the uh, if you look at the existing side elevation, there are two sets towards the rear of the house. There are two sets of triple windows, and those are being replaced in the in the addition. Um, and so what kind of, you know, so now we're, where, where are we saying that the history starts, I guess, because we, you know, we would normally talk about well, keeping, this, all, keeping all the available. Um, that, from that portion over is historic and original. This, this portion in, over here is the second floor addition over the over the existing porch so so old and new starts there starts and ends there so you're suggesting so all of those we're getting rid of uh, two sets of ganged wind windows yeah those are the ones that were that were cut in and those are the ones that were flush mounted aluminum 
uh, sash type windows. Okay. So, I mean, that's, we're trying to reintroduce where we found that there was um, a cutout for a window that was either moved um, or just, or boarded our, you know, uh, put the siding over them. And, and I'm sorry, sir, I think that your designer has, a, has another. Uh, that's fine. So, the portion that we're talking about that had the triple windows, mm -hmm. this was a filled in porch, so it used to be a porch was filled in with a sunroom, which explains the pilasters or the existing piers. Mm -hmm. So in the existing elevation, um, those pilasters are not shown, but they're now pilasters. They used to be columns for a porch. So that was filled in. The head height is only six foot eight, and the proposed ceiling height to be continuous for the whole first floor is gonna be nine feet, 10 inches. So it's gonna be a great room. And so we really wanted to repeat the head height throughout the entire home at, I think it's at seven foot eight actually. Mm -hmm. So we really wanted to be consistent with that. So your experience in that room, all the head heights are the same consistently in that space. So that explains the head height. It doesn't explain um, the reason why we took out those triple windows. I have a feeling it's probably gonna be a wall that's gonna house a piece of furniture, possibly a TV. So. Well, well, so let's that's well, go, go ahead, Steve. Well, let's put it this way. Well, what you're actually saying, though, is that from this indicator we see from the red pen, that element we have, if you were going to be historically, you know, true blue to it, the whole thing, that would be a covered porch. And then at some point in time, who knows when, where, or how, that became enclosed. And it may be more contemporary than we know. But we don't have any information that we could put a, you know, a finger on. That we know that that block as an interior space did not exist at one time. Exactly. Yes, sir. And the ceiling height, we have a, a building scan that the client paid for, and so we can scan around the entire building, and it has a drop ceiling. So when the renovation takes place and we put a second floor on there, we're going to continue the floor sandwich and the, the floor joists. Mm -hmm. So it's going to become a more stable structure. Right now, we don't know how that porch is being supported. So. Well, for, then, then in that respect, then, is not the, 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 the porch, at, the original porch as a structure being uh, uh, so thoroughly renovated uh, that it's really the only part that's, that, uh, that exists is really uh, the four square of the original house. I don't think that's what they're saying. No, is that it, correct? No, it existed, but at some point it had been filled in. But the but the underlying foundation of the porch exists, correct? correct? That's what my That's understanding correct. is. What we said we were going to do was to reevaluate the uh, the supporting columns underneath the foundation and make sure that it was strong enough to support the renovation and the addition on the second level. We don't really know what's going on underneath there. We didn't uh, we didn't do a thorough foundation examination we know that we know that it was filled in we don't know when or how we do know we do know that those windows are are not consistent with the high park guidelines and we where am i going turn the mic sorry i'm sorry <laughs> too much technology up here turn this on turn it off i don't know uh, anyway we don't really know um, and since it's at the rear of the building um, it, it's not really affecting the, the street side view uh, or the historic or architectural significance of the building. I mean, typically over time, and I'm guessing based on the way that it looked, it was probably done in the 50s uh, and maybe early 60s at the same time that they introduced that asbestos siding. It's just a guess. I, I don't know. For, I mean, it's an educated guess based upon the, the type of material that we found there. Um, Any other questions for you? It, it just seems to me that the original house, and we don't we don't have any documentation about the original house. All we have is the, I mean, even in the even in the Sanborn. What it, it feels like is you had a main structure that had a rear porch. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. And then at some point, 50s, 60s, whenever, mm -hmm. everything got they changed. Closed everything in. And now, you know, 50 more years, mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out what they did. 
Well, actually, if you look at the Sanborn, it appears to be, the Sanborn pretty clearly shows a, a fourth warehouse with perhaps an added porch on the northwest yeah, corner. Yeah, it's not even on the side we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's on the other side. So this addition, uh, it seems to me like when you're drawing the line and that the line should be at the four, you know, at the square and everything behind that can be treated as as an addition which is which follows a new addition depending on what you define as new <laughs> or right. old for that matter. Right, I mean I'm saying new new in the 50s or new in the 80s or 90s I mean I, I I'm I'm just guessing again but based upon the fact that they got a variance back in 1990, that there had to have been some reason that they were doing that. And that could very well, since it was on that rear portion where the eve to eve separation was varied, that could very well have been when that occurred. It may not have been, it may, may have been before that, I don't know. I'm looking for the Sanborn map that I can put up there on the screen. Any other questions for the applicant while he looks for that? Um, it doesn't have to be elevation. I mean, if you have a question about a particular detail or something that was in one of the other drawings. Well, based on that elevation, I would like to see the detail just to see what's going on at the foundation level. You want the Sanborn? Uh, I don't think, do we have any foundation, Amy? Do we have any foundation drawings? It, it should it's, be on the wall detail. It's the wall we, section. we have the wall section. It's the yeah. wall section that we prefer to look at, not a foundation plan. Right. Unless we're moving the structure, then we like to look at them. This is the rear portion of the wall So because we're interested in the foundation, can we zoom into the lower portion of the drawing for now, please? You mentioned in your presentation that you were going to match basically what was already on the house. With respect to the floor, the, the floor elevations and the, the uh, height of the supporting columns underneath. Okay, so this is what you're proposing here is the painted brick on top of the... Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to determine because, like I said, we, uh, we didn't excavate under there and we didn't have a, a structural engineer look at it. But we were proposing the same, uh, as it says on the top of the first floor, we're proposing the same elevation to occur so it would, it would be the um, continuous throughout the home. These are assumed when you're looking at this, you know, Mark, it says grade that's assumed grade um, some of them are, are uh, brick support some of them are concrete and brick there's a combination of different types of supporting elements there underneath the house but it's going to be piers not it'll be piers. a continuous footer or a continuous stem wall I mean. that's correct yes sir it'll be piers okay. you want me to show you the upper side of that uh, so with it being piers, are you proposing you would do the same finish around at least three sides? Yes, sir. How do you propose to close the um, foundation area then if you're doing piers? So screen and lattice. Out of what material? The wire screen behind to stop rodent intrusion and the white, you know, painted lattice to match the house. And the material of that lattice? The lattice would be wooden. Okay. Any other questions? Question Where was the two inch wood siding found? Um, there was a small section found underneath one of the windows at the uh, north northeast corner. And, and Ron, have I got that? Right. The, the northeast corner, and then there was another small section found underneath the porch, underneath the, uh, the northeast window. Do you have images of either of those locations? I don't remember seeing anything in the presentation. 
Um, Ron had those photographs. Okay. Uh, we did, uh, you know, because we found so many other elements, uh, and we thought that that was uh, a, a minimal uh, characteristic that was contributing to the structure itself. And then when we started evaluating the rest of the house and found that, you know, we estimated that approximately 85% of the house didn't have it. Uh, we weren't even sure when that was removed, but um, because the asbestos was there, uh, the asbestos siding, and because some of it was just on tar paper and some was uh, tar paper with, uh, with plywood nailed over the top of it, and then, um, and then we had the vinyl siding on top. Um, we looked at it and determined that the house was so compromised that we could not find a defining element that, uh, that demonstrated that the two inch was the, was the original structure. We couldn't even find photographs that showed that. So Ron, do you have those photos with you of the two inch siding locations? I went out with uh, the agent and I believe that they had some in their presentation. It was a it was a small area. It was not very large. He, he's accurate. You know, there there was a, a small percentage, but I thought it was important just to, as a preservationist, to uh, explore that with the stat. You know, the board this evening and kind of see the direction you wanted to go. But there was evidence on the north elevation, uh, towards the front, and then under the porch where the elements don't eat away usually at the original materials. There was a small section under there. But there was definitely a, a smaller exposure that was present, you know, in the day. I believe it was uh, original to the uh, the historic structure. I think Amy found it's something she's going to show with you. In this photo. Very tiny. Zoom in on that too, please. Sorry, went the wrong way. Again, technology. The photo that they're showing you there is showing that the uh, vinyl siding was already removed. The asbestos siding is still there. You see some tar paper, and then behind the tar paper is the exposure that was. Can you point original. that out, please, so that we are sure we understand where you were pointing? Right. Okay. Right there is what you're seeing. So it was indeed under the asphalt, the tar paper? Yes. Okay. See, the, you know, our, you know our, our position on this, it really is, that the, the entire structure was so compromised that, you know, we found that element, we found other elements, and we're just saying, you know, let us take it back, let us put in the seven inch, make it consistent with the Hyde Park guidelines, and, and uh, you know, and when Ron was going through the, the different criteria, it doesn't say you shall, it says you should. Um, and we think that this is an, a, an extraordinarily good example of, of, you know, how you take a, Sal's ear and make it a silk purse to use a vernacular. That goes way back, <laughs> which is appropriate. Any well, you know, we're trying. You know, we, we are. And, and the owner is getting ready to spend a, a lot of money to, to bring this back to historic accuracy. Um, and I know that the financial considerations are not, not part of your deliberation, but if he wanted to take shortcuts, uh, he could take them in a variety of different ways. Um, the, the cost difference between a two inch or three inch versus a seven inch it's probably nominal but it's the look that he wants it's the look that he bought when he bought the house even though it was vinyl siding um, and he likes it so I mean he this is really really wants to do and he wants to make this a beautiful example of old you know Hyde Park appreciate that any other questions for the applicant um. Getting back to this four square question, <laughs> can we look at the other elevation, please? I think it would be the north elevation. I uh, got it. I'll let my designer see if she can find it faster than me. Okay, we got. This is the north high. That before you. the long one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see? Uh, I've got it so zoomed in. All right, yeah, the other way. Here we go. All right, and that 
this whole this is this is all in one plane and at this point you're sh you're you're going to add a just a, a vertical board to distinguish between the existing and yeah. the yes and the between the existing and the newer. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. I understood okay. where you were going with it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. There'll be, you know, like a corner board or something, a distinguishing board that will run vertical mm -hmm. to distinguish the old versus the new. And so in this case, all of the, all of the windows to the left are going to be wood and all of the windows to the right possibly could be clad. Is that yes. Yes, sir. That's okay. what was being requested. Related to that question, sir, um, windows, the existing windows that are in the house right now, uh, do you have or can you ha have your people been able to identify any existing window that could be considered maybe original or are they all uh, aluminum or changed out in some fashion? The, the front windows in the main structure appear to be original. Um, some of them have been changed out and, and converted to aluminum uh, that are flush mounted. The ones underneath the porch appear to be original. Okay, and those and be those two big flanking windows. Yeah, I can show you the photographs of those if you like. Uh, no, just a general question, um, because uh, you know it, it seems at some point in time uh, that uh, uh, basically the entire whatever constituted the skin of this building got largely peeled off and replaced several times? At least three times that we can define by the different materials that we found. And just like we have our discussion on what is the four square and what is the original building, you are all fighting over, not fighting over, but you are all deliberating over what is an original condition and not. And you do not find anything predominant except what may have been post-war. I, I am guessing again that most of what you're seeing there is from the 50s and maybe early 60s mm -hmm. uh, in terms of you know what was stripped off and then what was uh, popular at the time of you know how you renovate a home. Um, I know f from my own experience my grandparents thought it would be a great idea to put aluminum siding over asbestos shingles and, and then underneath that was lapboard siding and I'm thinking okay why'd you do that? So there was, you know, several different layers. You but didn't have to paint it. Yeah, but that was the popular thing, and and the Sears door to door and, salesmen were very successful. Sears, Sears and Roebuck <laughs> made a lot of money by, you know, offering these great deals, um, and so they took them up on it. The same thing applies to aluminum awnings, um, and a lot of those have been stripped off. But I remember, you know, in my in my youth, that there <laughs> there were a lot of aluminum awnings in Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. um, so Commissioners, Ron Vila, for, for uh, additional information, I've been on the site numerous times. Uh, the front elevation has all been compromised as far as the fenestration goes. Uh, I'm, I'm very uh, positive in my interpretation. To the right of the door, if, if you could go back to, it, do you want to see the front, what I'm talking about? Yes. You want this one here, John? Well, I, I have it on my screen. That's probably a little more thorough, and I can zoom in. But to the right of the door, there's there's a uh, a French door there that yep. that is not original to the structure. To the left of the front door is a multi pane over multi pane. The trim, the siding, everything leads me to believe it's not original. If you go to the upper windows, those casement windows are not period appropriate appropriate for this style of architecture, nor is the proportions. So I think all the fenestration on the front uh, has been uh, compromised through, through uh, that time. Uh, the door placement is probably appropriate with the transom. Uh, I didn't get too much into the ghosting or any scarring uh, underneath that portion. I didn't see get peeled off. I didn't know if I had any side lights uh, associated with the front door package. But the, to the right and to the left of the front door on, on the second floor, that, that's all uh, been altered from the uh, original structure. Hmm. If I could just add, add uh, commissioners that once we, we strip off the rest of the siding, we'll be able to tell uh, what was the original and what wasn't, and we'll be in constant contact with, with Ron Vila 
and have him come out to the site and advise us on, you know, how we can better re replace and uh, renovate the existing front facade. And that, that, I mean, that applies throughout the re remainder of the house on, on the exteriors. Um, but it, it has been so compromised that, as I said, we couldn't find a defining characteristic for the siding. The windows, you know, they've been moved, they've been replaced with aluminum. I mean, this, this is a hodgepodge of a mess. And, um, and like I said, the owner is committed to restoring it back to uh, what would be historically correct. Uh, it's, um, like I said, he's, we're stripping this down to the, to the framing um, and then rebuilding and rescabbing onto the, the, uh, the studs as necessary. And we'll also be exposing the original location of the windows. And if they need to be moved in accordance with what was previously there, uh, we'll be moving those so that they correspond with those original patterns and spacing. Any other questions? Because we've kind of been in our I have period. Mm -hmm. None at all? OK. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give you five minutes for rebuttal if there's anything else you want to say. Unless, unless you have any questions, I think that we've covered the waterfront here. I, I um, agree. And as I said, that you know we've worked very closely with staff. And, and the only issue that really that the, the board um, needs to consider is whether or not you'll give us some latitude regarding the siding, uh, the width of the siding. And we're respectfully requesting that you do that. We think that we've demonstrated that there is a, a true and just cause for that. Um, and uh, we respectfully request your approval for that. Thank you. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing and uh, the commissioners and then I'll discuss the case. Anyone want to? bring about a point or it, it seems like the, the, the sticking point was a staff level anyway is deciding and fortunately it, the two inch siding was found unfortunately it's a very limited amount um, you know this house is probably sided and then as you mentioned after the war they probably got some air condition and decided they wanted the house to be a little tighter and they put felt paper on it and some asbestos siding and eventually the asbestos side needs to be repaired and then they got some vinyl siding. I commend the owner for what they're about to take on as far as this project. Uh, for me, on the siding, if we went to that extent, I think I'd be okay with it just on the front facade. You mean the shallower, the slender profile? Um, yeah, that's just that's just an odd condition, especially since it, you know, it does have corner views. Um, so this is a tough one. I, you know, when we're talking about preserving structures, sometimes we don't we don't know which error to go back to because it's not very clear. The evidence before us, though, shows that there was a layering, and yes, indeed, most of the original siding is gone. But because of the way it was layered, it is very it is pretty clear, in my mind, and as someone who has practiced in historic structures with historic structures, even in this neighborhood. Um, that the two inch is more than likely the original. It is consistent with the age of the home, the 1915 era. Um, you would see the more slender um, siding profile. Um, what what I am intrigued by is the fact that there are great lengths being taken to to sort of read the ruins, right? And I love that about historic properties that there are ghosts in the machine, basically, right? And they're, they're giving you all kinds of signals and you're doing these tremendously wonderful things for this house. I applaud you. I think the drawings are great. I honestly do. I'm, I'm talking to your designer. I think there's a lot here that um, speaks to understanding the context, to understanding the historical precedent, to uh, wanting to celebrate all of that within this neighborhood. So it, it, is, it is quite interesting to me that we're having this discussion about a two-inch profile versus a seven. 
And I understand the owner has a preference aesthetically for the seven inch. But if you're going to these great lengths to replace windows, to, to look at the trim, to look at these gable end facades and say, hey, there's evidence for this, and we're doing all these wonderful things with the detail, the trim, the materiality. I mean, you've consistently said, we're going to use wood wherever we think the original structure is. So um, taking that one extra step, I agree there might be some price differential, maybe, maybe not. I mean, there's a lot of places you can go and get a bit. I mean, I can, I can tell you where a guy is locally um, if you need it. I do have a guy um, who probably has those bits. Um, he used to be on Rome. Um, yeah, he probably still is there. Um, it's, it's been a while for me. Um, but, you know, I, I appreciate that and I understand it. But to make all those moves, put that much money into this, into this uh, structure and not go that one little step to be consistent, I, it's, it's, it's a big question mark for me. I understand the owner's preference. I honestly do. So that's my, my view from a historian. I agree with your two cents. <laughs> my two um, cents. It's, it's, it is compelling to think about the siding as a seven inch lap, but you are correct. You know, when you're going through the hoops to, to, to unearth every scrap of existing fabric with the intention of bringing that portion of that building back to that fabric, even though you have to fabricate the whole thing at least once, if not twice, <laughs> before you're all over and done with. And not to do that for your siding, which you are going to replace anyway, almost seems like a sin. And uh, I, I, I can honestly say that yeah, I would support, you know, the idea of, you know, if you want to use synthetic material on the existing uh, on on the new edition, that's fine. If you want to use clad on the new edition, that's fine. But for the existing building, it's going to be all wood or not at all. And if it's, and and if that exists and it, and if the evidence shows that it's of this profile, then it really ought to be of that profile. It's consistent. I mean, the profile itself is consistent with the time period. Yeah, what well, is it? And, and you'll see very many examples of it. In Which Park. profile are we talking about? The two inch or the seven? Yes. Yeah. The two inch. The seven is not. You'll see, you, not, you'll see not, plenty of that too. Um, usually it's, I mean, my experience is it's actually more between four and six, but every one of them is different because yes. you are getting materials from all types of different places and sometimes building those materials on site. Not and like now, and sometimes you're like, lucky to have the same material all the way around the building. Correct. So, you know, varying times. You know, as an example, if you want to change your materiality uh, for that portion of your addition that's above that roof line for the addition, you know, we'd be wide open to that sort of thing because that's not an unusual circumstance. Uh, un, you know, under the guidelines in Hyde Park uh, for the purposes that you have at hand. Uh, but for the existing building, since you're going so far to make that as a bona fide restoration, even though there's very, very little of the fabric left to it, then what fabric you do find should be the guidance of to which direction you need to go into. If I could, if I could ask for the uh, indulgence of the board here. Yes. If, when you're making a motion. Did you, I'm sorry. Maria pettis from the City Attorney's Office. I believe you closed the public hearing. I did, and and if there is a request here in terms of the up-down vote, we can we can entertain that, right? No. Not until we close the discussion. I think you, you have to reopen the you hearing. You have, you have to reopen. <laughs> you cannot advertise what your vote is going to be. You either vote or you either vote up and down. You don't then right. ask for a continuance based on the vote that was okay. received. What are you? I, I just, I wasn't going to ask for a continuance. I just wanted to 
make a, a, a quick statement, uh, a request of the board on how you proceed? Well, but if you would no. open, you have I'm to sorry, sir, but you but in to, that we we cannot we cannot have any further discussions. Can you give me just two seconds? So cannot I cannot I, I, want to talk I to cannot. The, I want to talk to the attorney. Okay, for a second. that's fine. You know, you know, it's panel and board. Um, th th that's fine, Warden. I mean, I okay. consulted with the attorney. You all are in deliberations, and you've closed the hearing. Yes, that's correct. Um, are there any other comments or concerns that we should discuss? May I look at the gable ends? Quickly. Sorry, are you opening? You oh, asking yes. more questions? We can't ask questions. That's We're right. only Sorry. discussing. <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. He's a newbie. You can you can raise a concern and we can talk about it if that's okay. what you'd like to do. Okay. Um, I'm a, I'm a little surprised at the two inch below the de the reintroduced detail at the gable, but I think there is there exists precedent for that. Are you talking about the batting board? At the gable end. It's the it's the it's the exposure. It's the there's a window for light, side so and and louvers for ventilation next yep. to it. And then there's kind of a patterning. Yep, board and batten kind board of and pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the and that's all wood. There's no stucco in there or. From my notes, I believe I thought I had written down wood. It, it would typically be. It, it could be either. Yeah. I've seen okay. both. It could be wood paneling, it could be, uh, or, or stucco. I've seen them both. Mm -hmm. But in, yeah, in either case, I mean, there is precedent, and I do believe they did um, show some precedent in the photo yes. essay. So. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Any other questions or concerns or points of discussion? The gable ends don't concern me as much. Like I said that the big question I think is just the not even the siding type is the profile. And as a condition, yeah, what that the siding profile be revisited, be coordinated with staff. With staff. I, I think the, the, the siding exposure should match the existing building uh, uh, to the, you know, to the extent that it, it could be on the existing building. But we still have the same thing. We have the materiality, doors, windows, trim, uh, siding. Basically, all that needs, to, if it's going to be replaced, needs to be all wood on the existing they, They've building. already made that concession in their, in, yeah. their, in their presentation and the further questioning that we had with them. Um, they have stated emphatically that they would do all wood in every location that is within the contributing structure area. Correct. And that wood cladding would be on the windows outside of that. Correct. So they made all those concessions for material finish. Yes, but it's but it's not in the documents choice. presented. I think we should, if we're going to make a condition, we should make that a condition. Well, we, we definitely should, although I think the designer might have said some of the things were changed since they were uploaded, but definitely we should make that a note mm -hmm. within the motion, just in case. In terms of the um, the siding profile, if um, if we do recommend that they revisit the notion of the two inch versus the seven inch, mm -hmm. um, I do think we need to be sure that we also add in there that um, the location of the vertical board to divide the areas is um, fully coordinated. I, I do think they're in the right spot but when they start to uncover the evidence, mm -hmm. if evidence shows it might be 
elsewise, you know, that, that's a coordination issue. And, and they did state they would do that with staff. I agree, because there's no telling what they're going to find once they start uncovering. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anyone like okay. to? Um, can I just clarify in regards to the two inch or seven inch siding, are you leaving that designation to be coordinated with staff? Nope. I think we're talking about if we make that recommendation, we're going to be very clear, I think, about whether it's two inch or seven inch. I, I believe, correct? I think correct we me need to be. Wrong? I think we need to be. At this level. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. I don't think we're saying, hey, staff, you tell them what. No, I think we are saying, I am adamant that we are saying either it's two inch or something. I think but we are stating the dimension, the profile. Referring back to staff is once they start uncovering and on the renovation side of this, where that delineation line is, we think we know where it is as of today, but unfortunately, there's no way to clearly know where that is until you start taking all this side and off. So I think that was what was you may have heard referring back to staff on that. Good? Yeah, I just, I just wanted your motion, however you propose, if it's your approving the certificate of appropriateness and any conditions that you're specific about your conditions that you have if that's the way the board chooses to go. Understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the siding, help clarify that. I think there's still some uh, exploratory work to be done on site. And I think that if we state it, it's something along the lines of a uh, two inch nominal exposure to match existing, we give whatever room is necessary. To, it could be two and a quarter, it could be two and a half. We don't know exactly what that number is tonight. I agree with the nominal. Um, if anyone wish to move forward with a motion? Okay. Um, we have the demising board. We have the all wood on the uh, contributing structure. Mm -hmm. And we have the nominal two inch siding to be coordinated. Yes, thank you. I'm going to take a stab at this. I move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and, de and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 21-312 for the property located at 713 South Orleans Avenue with the following conditions. One, that all materials replaced, and that includes windows, doors, trim be made entirely of wood with respect to the contributing structure to that the demising board between exterior finishes as uh, for the exterior of the building be coordinated with staff in the field as to its final location depending upon the findings of what may be uncovered as as the building is being uh, denuded, and three that the uh, that the siding uh, for the contributing structure consists of a two-inch nominal wood board of a lap and exposure and profile that approximates the existing as it may be found in exploration. For the reasons that based upon the finding of fact that this proposed project is consistent with the Hyde Park Historic Guidelines of the City of Tampa for the following reasons, predominantly that we have uh, an attempt in this massive renovation to maintain the materials as found and assemblies as found within the district. Also with respect to the, 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 uh, the Secretary of Interior standards with respect to uh, the repair and maintenance of exterior wood detailing. Have a second. 
I'll second that. Excuse me. Um, so we've made a motion with conditions. Do you understand the conditions of the motion? Uh, yes. The only question I had was you didn't address the gable ends. We, we didn't have a condition for the gable ends. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Did you want one? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no I'm, ha I'm, ha I'm happy. Okay. Um, so all in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye and raise your hands to indicate aye. aye. Opposed. Seeing none, the motion carries. So you have a certificate of approval with conditions. Thank you. Thank including, you so in, much. Including it's your gable ends. <laughs> well, I mean, you talked about them, so I wanted to make sure that we didn't uh, miss something. I appreciate spending the evening with you. It's, uh, it's been an enjoyable experience. <laughs> thank you. Experience. And thank you for your service, by the way. <laughs> I know that this. Uh, I now declare this hearing closed. Thank you thank very you. much. <laughs>